Are you ready to rewind? Take a nostalgia filled ride back to a simpler time. It's Acid Wash Memories, a retro pop culture celebration. And now, your hosts, Joe Morata and Michael Quinn. Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode number 36 of Acid Wash Memories, a retro pop culture celebration. And today, we are talking about Super Mario Brothers 3. My name is Joe Morata, joined by my own palette swap, Michael Quinn. How you doing there, Michael? Howdy. It's uh, time. It's time. The one, right? The one. Super Mario, Mario Trace. 3. Yep. The third installment. <laughs> Folks, if this happens to be your first installment of Acid Wash Memories, we want to remind you that we have 35 other episodes available where, Quinn? In the archives. In the archives. We are a retro pop culture celebration, and each week is something completely different, so you'll find something you like in there. At least we hope so. At least we hope so. And those of you that have already been a listener, welcome back, because we are doing part three in our Super Mario Brothers ongoing series here. Yeah. We this have, isn't even the end, right? I mean, like, oh, there's, no. there's more. Uh, there's much there's more. More to say here. We have covered the first two already, and today we're talking about the third one, but before we do that, I just want to remind you guys that you can follow us on Twitter at AWM Podcast. Follow us there and also join. If you want to talk about the old stuff, join our Facebook group, Acid Wash Memories on Facebook. Friendly place, right? Quinn? Very, very friendly. No all one's the mean. friends. Yeah, all, all the friends. All the Lee. Ross, Rachel. Yeah, they're, they're all they're, over they're there. They're all there. Yeah. I fell asleep. You fell asleep? If you want to talk about friends, I guess, and any other old television shows, cartoons, toys, we'll even talk food. about friendlies with you. The yes, restaurant. friendlies, yeah. exactly. Join our Facebook group, Acid Washed Memories. All right, that's it for the that's particulars. All, that's all there is. This is a big one. We have important ground to cover, and I want to remind you guys: if you haven't listened to either of the first two episodes, that will cover how we got to Mario One. It will also cover in part two. The Japanese Super Mario Brothers 2 and the U.S. and Doki Doki Panic and yep. all that's in between. Mario Brothers 2, they really lived up to the two, right? Yeah. They made two of them. <laughs> yeah, exactly right. But Super Mario Brothers 3, they made one of, and one is all you needed. Because Super Mario Brothers 3, I would imagine that most people that have played a video game have played Super Mario 3. It's very famous. It happens to be, not that anyone asked, but it happens to be, gun to my head, Michael... It happens to be my favorite video game of all time, huh. if I had to pick one. It's not my favorite, but it, it's up there. It's, it's, up it's there. in like the top five, I would say. That's still very high praise yeah, out yeah. of all the games right? Yeah, yeah. that you've ever played. It's up there, yeah. It's up there, and it's probably up there for a lot of you guys. Even, even if it isn't your number one favorite, you probably like it. You probably played it as a kid, maybe as an adult. And today we're here to talk about it. We're here to celebrate it because Super Mario Bros. 3 is regarded by a lot of people that have opinions about video games as one of the best of all time. Absolutely. So there are several reasons that people will always point to Super Mario Bros. 3 as one of the greatest, like, all-time classics in video games. It is the third best-selling video game ever on the Nintendo Entertainment System. Mm-hmm. Three. It's very fitting that it's the third yeah, best-selling Yeah, isn't it? It's very It's funny. like, don't go to one or two. We no, don't want to... We, need, we don't need to push it, right? Exactly. It was influential. Uh, it was expansive. And it was addictive, and it was a damn good video game. Super Mario Brothers 3 from Nintendo. Now you're playing with power. But before we get to it, let's recap the first two games real quick, real quick. So Super Mario Brothers 1, which it came out in some markets in late 85, and then widespread release into 1986, was a huge success uh, for both the Famicom in Japan and the Nintendo Entertainment System in the United States. It was a boon. Well, would you say it's a boon? Oh, it's a boon, all right. It, it was a boon for the sales of the consoles in yes. both countries. I mean, people wanted to see what Mario was going to do next, right? Yeah. It swept the nations, both nations, if you will, the United States and Japan. So obviously in Japan, they quickly followed up with somewhat of a hastily made sequel for the Famicom disc system, mm-hmm. Super Mario 2, which really used the existing engine yeah. and made the levels harder. Some would say too hard. <sighs> a little bit. <laughs> and the, the original two, it's like, it's good, it's bad. I have I have like mixed feelings, yeah. which I conveyed in the, that episode. Available in the archives. Yeah. But Nintendo of America was like, no, we're not, we're not going to have that. Yeah, Howard Lincoln was game. like, we're not, How, like, yeah. hey, listen, we like Nintendo games, just not this one. Not this one. Plus, by the time it came out, it would have been a little bit too late. It would have looked really old. It yep. wasn't different enough from the first one. Blah, blah. So, Nintendo of America took a Japanese game known as Doki Doki Panic, 
which had come out in 1987. As we discussed, it was more of a promotional vehicle than anything yeah. else for the Yumi Kojo Festival. It was a whole thing. <laughs> in it Japan. was not really meant to be Super Mario Brothers. It wasn't like that was the master plan. No, it wasn't. They were like making this weird game. They're like, this is going to be Mario 2 eventually. Yeah, that was never in the cards. Yeah. But Nintendo did play that hand in the United States, and they released it in September of 1988, reskinned, retooled, and upgraded as Super Mario Brothers 2 in the U.S. But it plays very different than the first one. Very different game. Yeah. You're picking up stuff. You're throwing enemies. There's wart. There's no yeah. Koopas. You, you had the, like a life bar. Yeah. Like, it's very strange. Lots of things going on. But I'll tell you what. We left off when it was released in the fall of 1988 here in the United States. It was a huge seller. I mean, it was a big, big game here. Even more popular are the adventure games like Super Mario. They tend to have ludicrous plots. Mario is an Italian plumber who, under your control, enters the Mushroom Kingdom to fight off killer turtles and deadly ducks until he can rescue the Princess Toadstool. The kids love it. And it kept the Mario name and the franchise, which had been slowly building mm -hmm. since Donkey Kong and Mario Brothers, it kept it afloat here in the United States. It kept it in the public eye, and it led to a bunch of things that we're going to talk about here in 1989, starting with the Super Mario Brothers Super Show. Hey, paisanos, it's the Super Mario Brothers Super Show! Yes, the Super Show. The it's super so show. super. It was very super. It, uh, it contains two different kinds of media in it. It's so super. Live action and cartoons, yes. right? Uh, by Deek Enterprises, Dick. as you... Deek. <laughs> yeah, Deek. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Deek. So how did this get started? Well, Andy Hayward of Deek wanted to license the Mario characters for something since Super Mario 2 came out. Again, fall of 88. He saw the bankability here. Oh, yeah. It almost like as a kid, it was kind of like, why isn't there a cartoon? Like, that was like what kids were asking. Right, because I think in Japan, hadn't there been a couple of like manga things or like there were some things. It was like drawings anime. floating around yeah. or something. Yeah. I don't know if there was like a, a full fledged anime, but there, there, was, there, there something. was There was stuff. Like a commercial with Mario of in course, Japan. Yeah, yes. there's all sorts of things. <laughs> But the original concept that Andy Hayward of Deke, Deke, it would be called the Super Mario Brothers Power Hour, and it would feature cartoons from all these successful Nintendo series, such as Mario, of course, The Legend of Zelda, Metroid, Castlevania, Double Dragon. These are all heavy hitters. It's and just funny that some of them aren't even like Nintendo. Some of them are like Konami and yeah, stuff. Yeah, right. That's, this is a good point, Quinn. Tecmo. Now, obviously, those things didn't develop beyond the first two, Mario and Zelda. And while it was in development and being planned on coming out, in May of 1989, you'll like this, Quinn, the guy that was cast to play Mario, Captain Lou Albano from the Captain World Wrestling. Captain Louis Albano, sometimes yep, Louis, known as. Yeah. He appeared on a sentimental favorite show of Michael Quinn's to promote the show, and that program he appeared on was Regis and Kathy Lee. <sighs> Regis and Kathy Lee. I almost like want to do a whole episode about those stupid morning talk shows because they're great. Like, we talked last week about The Price is Right and yeah. uh, Sick from School content. Oh, Regis and Kathy Lee, you right up it. there. Watch it right before Price is Right. You, 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 know? you got to know what, <laughs> what's going on in the world of entertainment. And with, Gelman. Yeah, and Gelman. And, what, <laughs> and Frank Gifford. What, what's Kathy Lee wearing? What's, yep. What dumb shit is Regis going to say today? Yeah, exactly. Like, it, it's all over the place. I've had a Hulk. Hulkamania lives, you know, the Hulk himself. You know what's interesting about the casting choice with Lou Albano, though, Quinn? It isn't maybe as random as it would seem on a cursory view because he had somewhat, and I don't want to overstate this, but he had somewhat entered the, the public eye, starting with obviously playing the dad in the Girls Just Want to Have Fun video. Oh yeah, that's where Lewis became known to people. But it was parlayed into the success of the first WrestleMania, mm -hmm. and also his uh, big role in Wise Guys, the film. <laughs> Wise Guys. Wise Guys, you know? so Which he had to cut his hair for, and he looks he weird did. in wrestling briefly. Very, yes, he looks very weird. Give me a ball, ball give me a beer. Frankie, Binny D, you're looking good. You know? Well, we were just saying, Frank, we don't see enough of you. You're exactly what I'm looking for, dickface. So kind of an interesting choice. He's got the portliness to him. He's certainly got the Italianness to you him. You know, if anybody visually could be Mario, it's him. During that period of time? I think he's a great choice. I think he is, too. And uh, Danny Wells played Luigi, an actor, Danny Wells. And this show debuted in... September of 1989, for those of you that like the date. So we're still pre-Super Mario Brothers 3 here in the United States. This was really a um, hopping off the back of the first two games. Right. 
And like Quinn said, it's got two things. It's got the live action skits in the like in their Brooklyn plumber shop or whatever yeah, it's, apartment. It's like a Pee Wee's Playhouse set. Yeah, like, it looks very similar. Very cheap. Luigi, Luigi, would you knock it off? You sound ridiculous. I sound ridiculous. <laughs> you and your goofy chipmunk imitations. Now that's ridiculous. Oh, come on, Mario. Well, give me a break. I'm practicing for my birdie lovers meeting. And then there was the cartoon segments. And the cartoons, they're mainly based on Super Mario Brothers 2, except you have Bowser instead of Wart. But Bowser, Quinn, you'll like this. This will be some edification and gratification I, for I'm, you. I'm, I think I know where you're going here because this is where I remember them always calling him a certain name. Here. He is referred to only as Koopa or King Koopa. King Koopa. Koopa's capturing all those children. The name Bowser does not appear. And this is why all along I was like, he's King Koopa. It says his, his name is King Koopa. What is what is this dispute that he's Bowser? Who who, who said this, right? <laughs> Besides Nintendo and the first yeah. game and the instruction manual, uh, no. They're very loud and proud in the cartoon about him being King Koopa. Yeah, because Lou Albano, Lou and Danny do the voices of Mario right. and Luigi, respectively. So you'll hear Lou Albano say a lot, King Koopa. Yeah. Like over King and over. Koopa. <laughs> we gotta King. be King Koopa. Come on, Mario. What's Koopa doing or yeah. whatever? Yeah. But what's interesting is... Is we use a lot of Super Mario Brothers two sub bosses in in this show, such as Quinn's favorite Mauser. Your children are now prisoners at Koopa Castle. Tri Clyde even makes appearances. Yeah, and the Koopa Troopas randomly. So yeah. it's a mix. Michael. Well, they're in the song. I mean, the Koopa, the Troopa, <laughs> the, Troopas, and the, the Princess, Princess, and the, and the others. others. Yeah. yeah. Speaking of which, there are three classic songs mm -hmm. for this because you have the live action. With the Mario Brothers and plumbing's a game We're not like the others who get all the fame If your sick is in trouble, you can call us on the double We're faster than the others, you'll be hooked on the brothers And then you have the animated into the cartoon one Yo, it's the Mario Brothers and plumbing's the game Found the secret water zone while working on the drain Lend the princess a hand in the mushroom land Turn so the action with the plumbers, you'll be hooked on the brothers And you have the outro The Mario swing your arms from side to side. Come on, it's time to go. Do the Mario. Take one step and then again. Let's do the Mario all together now. It also features Toad and Princess. So Toad, who had been a playable in Super Mario Bros. 2, he is now canonized here in the cartoon. Oh, yeah. And Princess Toadstool, mind right. you, not Peach yet. We don't do we don't that. Mention that. That's only in Japan. This, at this is point. why when we got to like Mario sixty four and they started calling them their like real names yeah, or like, whatever, what? I'm like, what is all of this? this is like, peach shit. But for the record, it was always Peach in Japan. Yeah, it's only in the U S. that they changed. Kind of it. like Final Fantasy seven, where they're like, it was three, and <laughs> yeah. now we're at seven. It's like the same it's like thing. we're we're just taking off. We're not going to confuse this shit anymore. Yeah, we're, we're just doing. This is how it is from now on. Okay. Yeah. Uh, also in the cartoon, some of you might know this if you watched it a lot, which I did as a kid. Starmen would sometimes give them firepower, which really fundamentally bothered me. It, it does bother me too, because there are fire flowers, but only in some episodes. This had the the like animation errors that I would associate with like turtles, the like cheap studios that yeah, did turtles, yeah, right? Yeah, it wasn't. Listen. It wasn't a bad show, yeah. but it wasn't going to win any awards or anything for animated series. The thing was, is that I believe, was it syndicated? It's first run syndication, yes. Yeah. I remember having a tough time finding yes. this, right? And when I did, I was like, this is lovely. I love, because it was like, I, I you could never see Mario animated or whatever, right? Oh, yeah. And I remember when the Scholastic Books paper or whatever thing sure. where they come to sell crap at your school. Yeah, of course. I remember the Super Mario Brothers Super Show like VHS yes, tape that had like, a couple them. of cartoons on it. I remember like begging my mom and I got like two of them. I think the one where they turn into babies oh, yeah, and, I know. <laughs> and, and the one where Koopa was Dracula. Yeah, that's like, what... <laughs> they were like two separate tapes and I think they both had like two cartoons so I had a total of four Mario cartoons. That's one of the things about... Uh, about Koopa, I guess we yeah. have to call him that for this cartoon, right? He was always dressed up as a parody of like another pop culture yeah, thing. Yeah, like everyone, he's always imitating something. Yeah, he's which is weird because he's King Koopa. He's already like a, a top villain in child lore. Yeah, child right? lore. It's yeah. real. It's real. He doesn't need to imitate anybody. But he did, like Elvis or something. He was always like something weird. And the princess, what perfect blunder for a pirate. <laughs> I've got you now, you stupid jellyfish. 
Another great thing about this show, which also prevented some tricky things in um, rerunning later down the road, was it used a lot of licensed music covers. Mm -hmm. So just a sampling of the songs, folks. Magic Carpet Ride, Heard It Through the Grapevine, Power of Love, which was actually almost contemporary, Born to be Wild, Great Balls of Fire, Thriller, Kung Fu Fighting. This felt like another weird trend in cartoons in the 80s. Did it not? Like, yeah. where they, they somehow had, like, access to licensed music if the property was, like, popular enough or something? I think so. I don't know it, what, what what that all entailed, but it seemed to be pretty prevalent. Like Ghostbusters, for yeah. example. Yeah, right? there you go. Another thing about this show is it had a slew of special guest stars, people that were actually pretty well known. Yeah, people would just stroll into the, the Mario Brothers shop yes. or whatever and, like, tell them about so i'm For pretty the, sure grandpa munster once showed up but that could i could be mistaken. he might have been i'm gonna give you a quick hit list of some people this is not everyone but uh danica mckeller from winnie cooper obviously yeah. sergeant slaughter mm-hmm. from gi joe and wrestling obviously magic johnson ever mm-hmm. heard of him he was very popular during this oh period yeah that of time. guy right <laughs> hey magic johnson how you doing man mario luigi I'm really glad you guys are going to help me practice. Hey, Magic, what do you want to work on first, you hookshot? Sorry to disappoint you guys, but what I really want to do is practice some magic tricks. Norman Fell, who was uh, Mr. Roper on uh, Three's Company. Mm Mm-hmm. Vanna White, that's a get. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it's wild, like how they like they could fill this show up. You wouldn't think, right? Like these are stars. Like why are they going to waste their time on like <laughs> this some dinky. kids, some kids like live action shit that's also about a video game, which means it's also a little, it's still more like obscure back then. Yeah, that's you know? true. That's true. Roddy Piper from yeah. wrestling, obviously, and they live. Cindy Lauper herself. All the Captain Lou people yeah. are like obvious, like yes. Roddy Piper, Sergeant Slaughter, yep. like Cindy Lauper, Cindy. and uh, Elvira. Yeah, she was there. That's just a few people. More wrestling connections. More wrestling connections. And the other thing about this is Fridays. So Monday to Thursday would be the Mario cartoons. Fridays, the cartoon would not be Mario. It would be the Legend of Zelda. Yeah, like, excuse yeah. me or whatever that that like meme is. That's probably the most famous thing to come out of yeah. that cartoon. Like Link is so obnoxious. Excuse me, princess. Can I tell you something? I hated Zelda Fridays as a kid. I. Like you I didn't liked it like probably, it. Right? I I thought like at first that it was alluring. Like I was like, oh, like that's cool, right? Because right. you you don't get to see it every day, right? So mm-hmm. it, of course it has some appeal. But then when you like look back on them and you're like, this is pretty weak, actually. It's not good. Yeah, it's annoying because it doesn't do even Zelda justice, right? Like the franchise. Yeah, like, it's, it's, not, it's kind of irritating, right? It's not very good. It's more of a serious kind of thing. So it's weird that they just made like goofy cartoons, like. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, even it, the cartoon is like not that funny, right? It's more no, of a serious cartoon. But I mean, it has stupid lines like "Well, excuse yeah. me" and shit, like, and it just doesn't belong with Zelda. I agree with you. Excuse me, Chris. Stop. So this version of Super Mario Bros. Super Show, even though it would be rerun a lot depending on where you lived and what station, the original run, as far as new episodes, was only from September until December of '89. Oh wow! Yeah. So if you saw, like there was like a million yeah, things where right. they were like in the super show right. center or whatever the plumbing zone. <laughs> so if you saw it in ninety ninety one, you're like, I remember what? Yeah, it was rerun, but it wasn't new anymore. Is what I'm it trying to say. They did a lot with these cartoons. They see how long they could do it without anybody noticing. Right? Absolutely. Now, have you ever seen? I need to bring this one up. The rebrand they did in nineteen ninety, which absolutely all, Club Mario. Yes, Club Mario. They replaced the live action stuff with these other teenagers. It's supposed to be a rap. What is this? So this is not as good. Let me just say. They have a surfboard like coffee table, Joe. Yes, I know. This set is hideous. <laughs> Looks like America's Funniest People or something. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, this is uh, something that you might remember. If you remember some other kids hosting this show and not, you know, live action Mario and Luigi, you were probably watching Club Mario. It was crappy. I did not like when I imagine this came there, on. And I'm just maybe just spitballing here, but why do I envision that there's some British version of this same thing? Same concept of like... Like Lord Winston's Mario cartoony <laughs> hour yeah. Something stupid. You know what I mean. Like where they During have like time. alternate hosts. Yeah. Like some British guy with a puppet. You yeah. know there would be a puppet because <laughs> it's England. Hello to everyone on the other side of the pond. We love you guys. Uh, <laughs> Superhero <laughs> Mario. Yeah. Super Superhero Mario, like something hosted by Vaughn, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> some asshole with and a mustache. Mo of court, by the way, just <laughs> yeah, there. And Mo, uh, some more licenses we got to talk about here. 
We're getting to Super 3, don't you worry, but we just got to set the stage for you of what the Mario temperature was like the here. Mario landscape. The Mario landscape, if you will. Uh, Southern California had a show called, <laughs> you'll like this, Quinn, King Koopa's Cool Cartoons. Stop. In 1989 and What the 90. hell was that? We okay. didn't have that. We didn't have that. It was only in Southern California. Oh, it's prize time, Troopers, and that means another visit from... Uh, Ratso the prize rat. Hey, what's the deal here? No costume. Oh, I expected Ratso the prize. Give away a power glove here. This was a show hosted by a man in the Bowser Koopa costume, and it's fucking frightening. What? And <laughs> this is horrible, Joe. And now this it doesn't even look like him. This show, <laughs> <can't tell. laughs> yeah. this show was not actually related to Mario in any other sense. I other- see Luigi in the back. What's that? About? No, no, no. Yes, you're right. But the cartoons he would show were just public domain cartoons. <laughs> for ki- it was one of those kill an hour of syndication. It's just type weird of that they were able to hook it up with Mario. This, there's no way that Nintendo. I'm sure they licensed it. You know, you think? Pay, pay us, fuck it. Yeah. yeah, why the hell not? Nintendo just sat back. We don't give a shit. Well, here's how much they didn't give a shit. In 1989, here is a smattering of some of the licensed products that had popped up by 1989. Ready? Slippers. Figures, figurines as they call them, right? Mm-hmm. Placemats, bowls, cups. That's right, you can drink out of a Super Mario cup. Uh, cereal, SpaghettiOs branded with Mario, bed sheets, underwear. Wasn't there the macaroni and cheese the, as well? The mac and cheese, a board game. How about this? Band aid, you get a cut, put a Mario band aid on it. Yeah, so they were a little looser, but these were a lot of these were like brands, right? They were like Kraft or Procter and Gamble or sure. somebody made them. Oh, yeah. But, that thing with uh, some rinky-dink TV network Koopa. in Southern California with a shitty-looking Koopa, <laughs> that is some dank stuff. Like it's That's dank. not the same as Band-Aids. No, 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 folks. If you've never seen King Koopa's Cool Cartoons, look it up. Mm-hmm. Look it up. You'll see what we mean. Like, I'm sure dank. Hanes got the license to make kids' underwear with fucking Mario Probably on it. Probably Hanes or Fruit of the Loom or yeah. something, right? One of those folks. But back to the video game side of things, shall we? On July 31st, 1989, Nintendo released their 8-bit handheld console. Yes. Uh, a game changer, Michael, as far as handheld consoles would be concerned. We are, of course, talking about Nintendo Game Boy. But now you can have all the power and excitement of Nintendo right in the palm of your hand. Introducing Game Boy. I have to say, I always thought the name Game Boy was a weird name for a console. Are they going off a of Walkman? That's what I always thought. Oh, maybe that is. I, but it's for I kids. I never put two and two together with that. Okay, maybe. so the name is weird, but yeah, yes. hell, it, it's freaking awesome. It's right. You get Nintendo in your hands. Well, uh, Nintendo is a, a generous way to put it. But, yeah, but, but they, they were still video games that, you know, was a system that took a cartridge. It had the right amount of bits, Quinn. It had eight bits. It had eight bits. It ran on batteries. Um, yes, it did. It's super low powered. Like, it says somewhere that it can run as low as like 0.9 watts. It's ridiculous. It's insane. It's insane. Like uh, as far as like an engineering thing, it's like wild that it even yeah. is real. And it's like indestructible on top of it because they were like, kids are gonna drop this shit everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> it's like made of this like thick ass plastic. That's like, a good point, man. Like there's that famous one that was like some soldier took to the Gulf War and it got like all fucked up. Like, yes. blasted to hell, and it still worked. Yep. Like, it was amazing. And the Game Boy obviously went on to have a hugely successful run in its original form. It was uh, obviously retrofitted a few times. Game Boy Pocket, then they did Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance, and it goes yeah. on and on. But the launch titles here in July of 89 were only uh, five games. Alleyway. Alleyway's fun. Alleyway is fun. Baseball. Just straight mm-hmm. up baseball, which probably sucked. I don't remember. I had the bases <laughs> loaded on that. Well, that's with, a lot better. With, which probably. was better. Yeah. yeah. Tennis, which the tennis Nintendo's tennis games are always fine. Yeah. I never have a problem with them. It's all sound like the black box games, like basically. It's pretty much. But here was the biggie. This is the killer app. One of two killer apps. Tetris. Tetris. Oh my god. That was the pack in on was it on all or only some? Some I'm not, yeah. The initial Mine came with Tetris. But it was definitely a... Uh, the Russian phenomenon, that game, man. Yeah, and, it, and it, I don't remember if the NES one had come out just yet, or the Game Boy was technically the first Can't one. Can't remember either. But either way, like the Game Boy one was the most popular one. Oh hell yeah! Because I mean, my dad would try to like snatch my Game Boy to play Tetris. <laughs> there you go. Well, because it's a addicting game. It's easy to pick up and learn how to play, and it's perfect for the Game Boy. Perfect right. for the all Game Boy. ages. Yeah, all ages. It's two buttons and the yeah. D pad. Perfect. But the other launch title, the fifth launch title... And this was a a title that I felt like Nintendo would not put out 
like a new system without this without a game. There you go. Like this. Super Mario Land. The Martians are coming! Yes! And Mario is your only hope! Team up with him in Super Mario Land! Guide him on the Nintendo Game Boy! That's right. I love this game. Like I, think I, it's very I, good I too. actually like like it a lot. I it's like it too. Weird as shit. Like it's yes. really strange. And we'll talk about why. So this was not developed by Shigeru Miyamoto and R and D four, right? Who had done the first, the all the Mario games so far. This was R and D one. Okay, the first R and D Quinn. The, the, we're sending it back to one. <laughs> yeah, we're sending it all the way they're back to their one. Getting big shot to make a <laughs> Mario game. Let's see how they do. Let me put it this way: If you have played Super Mario Land and you're like, why is this? Almost Super Mario Brothers, but not quite. Well, that's one of the reasons. It doesn't take place in the Mushroom Kingdom. Mm-hmm. It takes place, of course, in Sarasaland. Yeah, that that one that yes. we're so accustomed to. It's named after a type of textiles that were called... So it really doesn't matter why. But it's not the Mushroom Kingdom. Uh, and as such, you are not rescuing Princess Toadstool. You are rescuing, making her debut in the Mario mm-hmm. canon, Michael Quinn... Princess Daisy. And now Daisy would go on to be in Mario Kart and all tennis and all these other yeah. games. But the, the love is, interest of Luigi. Yes. It is, so her day butt here in the in Mario Land. <laughs> her day butt. Yep. And you are not rescuing Princess Daisy from Bowser or Koopa or Bowser Koopa or, or King Koopa. Or any kind of Koopa. No Koopa. No Koopa. You are res- rescuing Princess Daisy from Tatanga, the alien. Yeah, him. Like <laughs> remember everyone, him? That everyone remembers. So, so memorable. So Tatanka, Tatanka, yeah. Tatanga, or Tatanga, is a tiny little purple alien that is kind of like diminutive and stupid, but he flies a spaceship. And, and that's this why. is important for like some of the levels in this game. Yes. And, uh, and you understand why later. Yes. So in this game, you play it very much like the first Super Mario Brothers. Uh, instead of firepower, you have super ball mode. You throw bouncing balls. Yeah, so it like ricochets off the mm-hmm. walls, and it takes a bit for it to finally like disappear, which yep. is annoying because I think you're only limited to so many on the screen. Like it, it, you can't shoot them out after like a, a certain a amount. A certain amount. Yeah. yeah. There's also two vehicle modes. Mm-hmm. Now this is a brand new thing for a Mario game. Yes. Right? Mario 1 and 2 didn't have no vehicles. You have the Marine Pop, which is a submarine for water levels. Yep. And you have the Sky Pop, which is the airplane. Yes. How cool are these, Quinn? These are these levels are super fun. So you have this thing, right? That and it's basically it runs under the same structure as Mario. If you get hit, I think there's like a smaller version or something. Yes. Like or like a different like a when, crappier version. Yeah. <laughs> so you can shoot and, and fly around and you can go all over the screen, right? But a lot of the stages are like, there's walls and they're like destructible and you have to like yep. pop through them, right? Yep. Um, the, the blocks, all they all break just like if Mario jumped his head and hit them, right? But, yep. it, but then now you have a thing to shoot at them and they all bust all open all over the place. So a lot of levels are like that and they're just fun, right? And the bosses you, you shoot to kill, like it's not like you get out and like fight them conventionally or anything. Yeah, I think it's, I think it's a really good attempt like a really good effort as a launch game a mario game on yeah i think it's really well done drawbacks of it is like for some stupid reason like i really think this is an odd choice considering the size of the screen as it is everything is tiny everything is tiny and i understand like the logic they're thinking well the screen's tinier so if we make everything tinier the there's more room but the drawback is it's, like, really hard to see anything. Even for a kid, it was tough. It is. I really... I don't think I beat it until I played it on emulation with right, a controller and then you in my hand. Put it on a computer screen <laughs> yeah. and it's much bigger. It's a lot easier. Uh, it's also short. It's only four worlds with yes. three levels each. Now, now, the thing is, though, is the there's a... There's an infamous like song in this that is like amazing. There's like a stage where there's like a bamboo forest, mm-hmm. and it's kind of like a more Asian themed kind yeah. of music. Yeah, all the levels and are cool. It is one of to me like one of the all time like best Mario songs. Period. Yeah, I'll have to make sure that's playing under us right, right. now as yeah. we're talking. It's like it doesn't sound like anything like the rest of the game. By the way, the rest of the game's like typical. Like it isn't Mario music, but it, no. it's more in that vein. More like, in that vein. It isn't Koji Kondo. Yeah. Who had done all the other ones so far? Some of the enemies, though, uh, there's a lot of them. I just wanted to mention there's not the Goombas, there's the Goombos. Yeah. There is not uh, regular Koopa Troopas, there's bombshell Koopas. Okay, so these, I need to comment on <laughs> yeah, this. Yeah, please because go. Unlike every other Mario where 
you jump on a Koopa and you can hit the shell. This thing's a damn trap. Yeah. You you hit you jump on it and it turns into a bomb. Yes. And you have to like make sure you're not next to it. Yes. And there's certain like platforms sometimes where they're super small and there's like a Koopa on it, but that thing's gonna blow up and you're like, oh god, I have to like <laughs> I have to get the hell out of here like after jumping on him. It is very precarious, right? I think yeah. Is a good way to put it. Yeah. Uh, there's also I have to mention Bun Bun. Now Bun Bun is a little like fly bee thing, and this I'm just dumb me- thing. I'm just mentioning because of its name. It's a very yeah. funny name. But I would be remiss, Quinn, if I did not mention, not Bullet Bill, but Bullet Biff. <laughs> Bullet Biff. <laughs> this little bastard. It's just because of the name. They, they alter, like, everything slightly, slightly. If, if, if it's similar enough, yeah. right? Like, if it's like, oh, they, but they'll recognize that, right? Bullet Biff. <laughs> so why don't you make, like, a tree and get out of here? So Mario Land did extremely well, by the way. It was the second best video game release of 1989. Well, I think actually the strategy they used here is actually kind of brilliant, right? Because 18 million, by the way. 18 mil. Go ahead. Because the pack-in for most people was Tetris, but you felt inclined to get Mario because you were like, oh, wow, it doesn't come with Mario? Like, Mario yeah. usually comes with Nintendo. Yep. Like, what are they doing here? Like, like I like Tetris, but sure. I really want Mario, yeah. right? So I think a lot of people, you know, when they went and got their Game Boy at Macy's like I did, that's how long ago it was, <laughs> uh, it was like we got it and it came with Tetris, but we also got Mario with it, right? That's a it brilliant a, scheme. Because it was like, what What are we doing here if it doesn't have Mario, Like, right? And the games weren't expensive either. Yeah. They were pretty cheap. They were? How many? How, Relative I to I do Nintendo not re- games, yeah. I do not remember how much Game Boy games cost back then. Oh, I don't know. 20 bucks, maybe? Were they that cheap? I that's crazy. So. Uh, that's my guess. I could be wrong. Feel free to check me on I, I honestly do not remember because they were some of the earliest video games I yeah. had, period. Like, yeah, I mean... The Game Boy was the first like thing, thing you I, had. I had. I think it was for a lot of people. Uh, but we got to go back a few years here because we did promise you a Super Mario Brothers 3 podcast, right? Mm-hmm. And if you're new here, yes, we always get to the point. We just always lay some groundwork for you. Because I, it's, it's good to know, though, about this Super y- Mario land. I think setting the whole stage for where we are in the U.S. in particular is very important for when this mm. game comes out. So we're in 89, but we're going to go back three years to 1986, okay? So very shortly after the release of Super Mario Bros. 2 in Japan, mm. that's lost levels here, June of 86, work began on the third game, okay? So, so Vince Miyamoto, he went to town here. <laughs> Vince Miyamoto, yeah, yes. yes yeah. And Miyamoto decided that this could not and would not just be a game with the levels changed and the same graphics and the same engine. Okay. That trick had been played already. He already did it twice in Japan. Not doing that again. So R&D 4 had... The originals. Yes. More than double the amount of people working on this game versus the first one. I think it was something like seven or eight on the first game. They got upwards uh, close to 20 people. Now, I remember somewhere seeing that the people on this were like a dream team of... Some of the people like made some profound video games after oh, this yeah. game like this, this was like this is the best we got at nintendo right like right. this is all the, <laughs> the heavy hitters and i think that contributes to why it's so good well miyamoto yeah worked with some of the great Tek- takashi tezua and a lot yeah, of different yeah, people like this this game people spread out from this game afterwards like people got famous for being involved in this absolutely shit, right? within, they did it, within video game industry absolutely they did and this team this dream team worked Endlessly on this game. Remember, development started in the summer of 86. They were working on the level design, the graphics, tweaking the gameplay, adding new features, new power-ups, new enemies, new concepts. And you got to remember Miyamoto going back to the first game, how meticulous he was and insistent on certain things. And he's at the helm making sure like, okay, well, we did this once. I'm going to make sure this dream team is kind of doing what they got to do, right? One of the members of the Dream Team was Koji Kondo, and he again handled the music all by himself. Of course. Composed it all. I mean, back in the day, I mean, when I say a Dream Team, it's not like a zillion people. It's like, it's like a team. It's a couple of hand-picked, <laughs> um, really good at making video games yeah. people. Like, Specialists. Yeah. So the release had originally been scheduled in Japan for the spring of 1988, but due to Miyamoto wanting to tweak more things, change some things, add some things... It was pushed back about six months, and by the fall of 88 in Japan, the hype was palpable for this. It was tangible. It was in the air because they had had these two Mario games, which were both hot sellers, merchandise in Japan, 
possibly anime or manga or something. It's <laughs> something in a drawn form. Maybe manga. Ma- maybe. They wanted their Mario, damn it. Right. In a weird way, I- I- I'm feeling like this six-month delay was probably the best thing for the game because the hype was like hype. fever pitch now right people were like oh man we gotta get Mario yeah. like Mario 3 is coming like this is gonna be the game this man. is gonna be the game because I mean it had been over two years now since Super Mario Brothers 2 in Japan and 2 was like while it was good I feel like the fans at the time, at the they, time. Must, they must have been like this wasn't their best work Right, like this, we, think, right? we we this could get better, right? And all, look at all these new NES games with these nice graphics and stuff, right? Like, what if they did that to Mario? Well, that's one of the things we were talking about. I think of the Mario Two episode is that right around eighty seven, it seems like the, the the developers, both Nintendo but the other developers, you know, Konami being one and whatever else, started to get a real good handle on how to maximize the NES disc system and mapper chips, like the combination. Yeah, the like, mapper chips were huge. The mapper chips were huge, but the disc system also for that middle period where they could fit more on the discs. Yep. Again, a huge boon because the textures and stuff, the quality, they could fit more. That's a great, way to, a great way to put it, Quinn. So finally, on October 23rd, 1988, in Japan, Super Mario Brothers 3 was released. Super Mario Brothers 3. We will talk about Mario 3 in a little bit. Don't worry, we're going to talk about how this was received and how the game played. But obviously, the United States, they're going to get the game, too, right? right. I mean, we, we got the other ones. Of we, course. You know, we, we need this. However, there was a chip shortage uh, is one of the reasons that we didn't get it right away. ROM chips. However, Super Mario Brothers 2 was just released in September of 88 in the United States. Right. The U.S. <laughs> just got its fake Mario 2. Yeah. Like. <laughs> and remember, hot seller. So, was it a chip shortage? Yeah, I mean, there was a real one that did exist, but would it have really been a good idea to release three in the U.S. even just a few months after two came out? Is that right? Because two didn't even get a chance to sell. Right. It it would be shooting yourself in the foot, wouldn't it? Well, everyone, nobody would get two. Yeah, well, nobody would. Screw this. Yeah, probably. Right? It's like Super Mario Bros. 3, especially since we know what the game's like. Yeah. You know? It would undercut both, though, is what it would do, right? It would right. undercut two and three. So, yes, chip shortage, but also smart planning here. Yes. So why not, for the year of 1989, remember the year where Super Mario Brothers Super Show came out, and all the licensing is going on, and King Koopa's cool cartoons, do Koopa. not forget, Yes. <laughs> and Mario Land, why not, on top of all of this Mario crap being thrown in your face on all your network channels and your broadcast syndication, why not take it to the theaters? Why not release a movie that is essentially a 90-minute infomercial for your upcoming hot property, The Wizard? The Wizard. Fred Savage. The Wizard. Let's, <laughs> let's get Kevin from the Wonder yeah. Years to travel the country with his, like, mute brother or brother something. who had experienced trauma yep right and and we're <sighs> we're gonna travel because we gotta go be in a video game tournament for mario his brother, 3 his brother's good at it yeah he's like a savant or something yeah this and is... the power glove kid is like i'm gonna beat you because i have the power glove <laughs> it's so bad i love the power glove it's so bad this was envisioned as a children's version of the who's tommy you know the pinball mm-hmm. wizard Deaf, dumb, and blind kid sure right. plays a mean pinball, right? Yeah, but they also try to act like the power glove's going to like make you good at Mario it when it's horrible. Like a, makes you look like an idiot. <laughs> yeah, but on top of it, it's like not it's easy to play with it, Mario. right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, yes, this was envisioned as a, a children's version of a, of a Who album and mm-hmm. movie, but it was really envisioned as an advertisement <laughs> more than anything else. So, yes, they, they pull in Fred Savage. Uh, they pull in Jenny Lewis, who would the child star at the time, went on to be a, a singer and they pull in Christian Slater, <laughs> uh, and Luke Edwards played Jimmy, the Tommy role. Jimmy. Jimmy, yeah. <laughs> and uh, various Nintendo games were featured. It wasn't just Mario 3, but the climax, the they big... They built the whole movie up to this, like, reveal, right? It was almost like these, you know how these days they have, like, the trailer announcements for video games? Like, they have, like, E3, not E3 anymore, they don't yeah. have it, but you know what I'm saying. I know like, what you mean. Where they have these big build-up, and they show you all these games, and then the last game, but one more game, right? It's yep. like, it's the one you've all been waiting for, right? And it's Mario 3 in this case. It's Mario 3. Super Mario Brothers 3! This was filmed in the spring and summer of 1989. 
It was released in December, okay. Christmas. Get it on parents' radars that this game is out, right? When they're in the holiday mode, the giving God, season. Imagine dragging your parents to watch an infomercial for 90 minutes. I would have done it if I knew about this. I don't think well, I knew about Well, me too. I mean, every <laughs> I, if you were a kid, you were like, the promise of yes. getting to see Super Mario Brothers 3. Nobody had ever seen it. It was like this no, there's big, no internet here. This big enigma, right? Obviously, it was in Japan or whatever. Yeah. But like, no, nobody in America was like, what does it even look like? We don't know. Well, it was 1989. We, yeah. It was very hard to find these things out. Yeah. So obviously the movie was panned. It was not well received. <laughs> well, no shit. Do you think anyone cared? No. No, because it served its purpose, which was to increase the hype for the upcoming release of Super Mario Brothers 3, which was due to be released in February of 1990, only two months after the movie. And when we finally get to February, Super Mario Brothers 3 comes out, and we will be talking all about that. On the other side of this break, because right now I've got to go change my Mario underwear and get myself some Mario yep. SpaghettiOs mm-hmm. and go lay in my Put Mario on your, bed sheets. Put your Mario socks on. That's right. Folks, take a break, take a pause, listen to some commercials. When we come back, we're getting into it. Yes. Super Mario Bros. 3, the gameplay, the enemies, the worlds, all the good. Coming up with more Acid Wash memories right after this. Nintendo is more than a game. It's a place you can go. And when you get there, you're going to see things you've never seen before. Two things you didn't know were possible. Enter the world of Nintendo for the largest selection of Nintendo Entertainment System and Game Boy games and loads of other exciting Nintendo products for the whole family. All at a Rose's store near you. Holy cannoli, kids, I'm Mario, and I'm telling you, if you're not watching the Super Mario Brothers Super Show, you're going to turn into a Goomba. Don't be the last on your block to be playing with pasta power. Tune in for the wildest weekday fun in the universe. Join me, Luigi, Princess Toadstool, and Toad. We're going to kick some Koopa. Woo! It's just me. Introducing a very special chicken sandwich. Wendy's Chicken Cordon Bleu. With a boneless breast of chicken. Fabulous. Swiss cheese. Two slices of ham. Grey Poupon Dijon mustard. And mayonnaise. All on a toasted Kaiser bun. But this masterpiece will only be at Wendy's for a limited time. What good is art if you can't enjoy it? Come in and try the new Chicken Cordon Bleu sandwich. Only at Wendy's. He's back. In the all-new Super Mario 3, Nintendo, now you're playing with power. And now we return to more acid-washed memories. And welcome back to Acid Wash Memories, a retro pop culture celebration. This is episode number 36, and we're talking about Super Mario Bros. 3. I'm Joe Morata. That's Michael Quinn. Hi. Thank you guys so much for being with us here. Quinn? I'm excited because we are, we're just about there. It's just about time to talk about this. It is. It's about time. It is about that time. But folks, if you don't mind taking a second of your time to uh, follow us on Twitter at AWM Podcast, join our Facebook group, and hey, if you like what we do, subscribe, leave a review on your app of choice. We'd really appreciate that. But we're talking about Super Mario Brothers 3, and I would say, Quinn, you would, would? You, would, you, <laughs> would you agree that we have sufficiently set the table? Oh, the table's been set. The, the, the fine silver wears out. Yes, um, the fine silver wears. plates with, like, Prince Charles and Diana are on, Ooh, on there. I don't want those. Do Back want- then, that was, like, what people had. Oh, in 89? Yeah. 90? Okay, well, then never mind. Excuse yeah. me. We talked about Tatanga. Yeah, I mean, Tatanga was there. King Koopa's cool cartoons. What more could you ask yes. for? Nobody asked for that. But now we are in February of 1990. The wizard has come out. It's all water under the bridge. Mm-hmm. People are like, it's okay, let's just get to the game, please. We've seen the commercial. Yes. We've seen the Tatanga. We've seen <laughs> the Game Boy and all yes. this bull crap, the cartoon. It's time. The winter of 1990, February 12th, Super Mario Brothers 3 is released in the United States, and let's finally talk about the game. So I'm going to give you the story straight from the manual. Just okay. to give you a quick story. Uh, the story. <laughs> think anybody game. ever thinks of the story in these games. Well, in this case, it is the Mushroom Kingdom has been a peaceful place, thanks to the brave deeds of Mario and Luigi. 
The Mushroom Kingdom forms an entrance to the Mushroom World. Well, we're getting bigger. Where all is not well. Bowser, their words, not mine, Quinn. Bowser oh, crap. sent his seven children to make mischief as they please in the normally peaceful Mushroom World. They stole the royal magic wands from each country. So there's countries in this mushroom mm-hmm. world. And they use them to turn their kings into animals. Mario and Luigi must recover the royal magic wands from Bowser's seven kids to return the kings to their true forms. Okay. So that's the story. So I guess right off the bat, we've established that we are back in mushroom-related territory. Oh, we are in mushroom. No war. None no of this war. dream world We're back stuff. where we began. We're not sleeping. We're not sleeping. There's no subcon or any of that. So, if you've played the game, you know a lot of what we're going to talk about, but we have to recap because that's what we do on this show. So, you obviously have your one-player mode where you play as Mario. Your two-player mode, you play as Luigi when you're player two. I want to make mention here, and this is actually a correction because I I had it wrong off the top of my head uh, in the first Super Mario Bros. game that we discussed. In the first game, if you play the two-player mode... Player two does not get to go until player one dies. It's not even upon level completion. Whoops. Yeah. Yeah. So if you have a really good player, they could just run the game and you're sitting there like an asshole. Used to piss me off. (laughs) It's like, I don't want to be player two because everyone's played Mario. They're not going to die for quite a while. Right. Right. So in this game, you actually alternate levels. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing. Uh, Improvement, I would say. Big improvement. Mario and Luigi are back to being palette swaps, whereas in the second game, Luigi was bigger because he was Mama, if you recall. Right, right. Do you remember Mama? Yeah, Mama. He was Mama. In this game, they're back to being palette swaps, and their overalls are black instead of blue due to palette restrictions. Wow, there's a lot of colors in this game. Yeah. I'll take that sacrifice. Minor note. You only play as Mario Luigi. You do not play as Toad. You do not play as Princess. Yeah. None of them are in there. Princess, by the way, looks the same like she did in Super Mario 2. It's like pretty much the same sprite. One of the big things to talk about is there are now overhead world maps, Michael Quinn. This was a very big deal when I was a kid. I was like, wow, like look at this. You can see all the levels and and what does the kingdom look like? It kind of just gave life. It's a very simple thing, too. It's just like a level select, essentially. Yeah. You could go backwards if you beat the level and like there was like bonuses. Other stuff, stuff. yeah. yeah. It's still a lineal game, technically, but you can take detours in this game that you couldn't you couldn't even approach doing this in either of the first two. I, I'll say one thing that is cool about the map system, but it only applies to the two-player mode. If somebody gets credit or whatever for beating a stage, you can, like, go steal it or whatever. Well, yes, yeah, so you can You can face each other in the two-player battle game. Right. Which is a, ta- a send-up of the original Mario Brothers. Right. You could steal their item cards, is what you're thinking of. Right, yes. For extra lives. You could get shit. Yes. It was amazing. It was really cool. And these maps are integral to the game because they give you, from a visual standpoint, it it makes the game feel so much more immersive to see where you're going. Right. And the maps themselves, when we talk about the worlds, we'll, we'll get to it, but the maps themselves even set the tone for the levels. Right, and some of the maps even have, like, sections that apply to the level. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's true. Some of these maps are much larger than one screen. Right. A lot of them, and we're going to talk about them. But I found that to be, like you said, it's a simple thing, but it really is a game changer in the Mario series. Yeah, like, a good example to me is occasionally... There'll be like a water level, and you'll walk over like a body of water, yes. and like it's like, oh, I see. <laughs> yeah, because even like I swear, there's one map. There's like a lake, but you're the sum of its land, and you're in an area where there's water, but there's also land. They right? put thought be- behind right. all this, right? And you have these mini fortresses to clear, and at the end of every map, every world, you have the large fortress, which. Let's just talk about this now. So basically, you go into the the castle at the end of the level. And when you go in there, you find out that the Koopa Kid has taken the wand that you need to transform the king back, taken it away on an airship. Right. So all the Koopa Kids, they all have airships, right? Yep. But what makes this weird is that, say you, you lose... For whatever reason, you lose to the Koopa Kid, you fall in a hole or something, yeah. or you get hit by a spike, whatever, right? Mm-hmm. You lost. The ship will, like, run away to, like, another part of the map, and you have to, like, go get it. Yes. And what's funny about this is, like, in some maps, you have alternate routes, and sometimes the ship will go hide behind an area you didn't explore, thus forcing yes. you to have to, like, play the level that you 
wanted to that skip in the first place. you to avoid, yep. Right? And it's kind of like, damn, what a bunch of bullshit, right? What a bunch of bullshit. As far as the gameplay itself, it plays very similar to Super Mario Bros. 1. We're back to those mechanics where the running, the jumping, the stomping, collecting coins, bashing bricks, that yeah. type of thing. Uh, super form does return with the Super Mushroom. All items and all characters and all enemies have been redrawn. Right. Nothing is retained that I know of from the original. So the Mushroom looks different. It's like rounder and friendlier. Yeah. Mario looks rounder and friendlier, yes. right? The Fire Flower has made its grand return. So mm -hmm. Fire Power returns. Mario turns orange in this one. The yep. Star Man has returned. Mm -hmm. But it's what's added, I think, is what yes. people remember about this game, right? So the biggest new power-up yeah. is the Super Leaf, which gives Mario a raccoon tail and ears. Yes. And allows him, you know, much like a raccoon, to fly. Yes, raccoons, an animal known to fly. All to fly like a bird, no less. <laughs> like, like where it like, can flap its tail and it flies all over the place. Is this just some weird Japanese legend thing or that I'm not... A, like some isn't it lost in translation kind of situation? Isn't it partially or something yeah. like that? Either way, the flying works off a mechanism where there's a speed bar at the bottom. And so it was always hold B to run or whatever, right? Yep. But in this game, you hold B to run... But as you run, the speed bar increases, right? And if it hits the P, yes, the, 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 all, the all the way to the top of the speed bar, which is P, P for fly. Then of course, that's what. What is that? Like, what is P? What it, power? I I don't know. Probably. Whatever. So now you have now you now like a noise will happen, like P, <laughs> like like to like denote that okay, you're like going fast enough, right? Yes. Like, so it makes the noise, and then if you jump yes. while you have this, and you repeatedly hit jump, his tail will like. Doot, doot, doot. Like yeah. it'll like flap, flap a little bit, and you can go up and down. And if if you got to kind of maintain momentum to like control your elevation, yes. Because at a certain point, you know, when he runs out of P or whatever, yes. When he runs out of P in the bathroom, you can't elevate any further, and you can only drop at like an arc. Yeah, you can. But you can slow coast. your arc by like by flapping. flapping more. Right. A lot of flapping goes on in this game. Right. <laughs> But not only is flying making its debut here, not only is it really novel and really cool, not only was it, you know, did it go on to be integrated in different ways in other games, flight that is, it's also crucial to defeat some of these levels. Oh, yeah. It's necessary. And to get some of the secrets. And to get some of the secrets. So that was probably the biggest add-on in terms of power-ups. This, to me, the flying was the coolest shit. By far, because... And it's on the box art. The thing with Mario prior to this is you were restricted to the ground. Like, you you could jump, but you could not... Some some stuff you couldn't, like, get to sometimes. You'd be like, eh, how do I get up there or yeah. whatever? Or, you know, like, you had to use a spring or some shit. Right, right? And Mario like, 2, you had to use an albatross or something. Yeah, like, <laughs> it'd always be some annoying, like, way to get to something high. But now... I have this power and I can like I can go in either direction up and I'm not restricted to like where I can like use to get elevated. It's like no. Like I can just go wherever the hell. Yeah, right? you could just go flying. It shit. was amazing. It, it really is. It really was cool. And I was like, how could any video game get any better than this? Right. And <laughs> it just it, it did seem like a level of freedom we had not had in a video game. Oh, before. it's a huge feature. Uh, there's also a power up known as the P Wing. Yes. And this power up allows you to fly unlimited unless you get hit. Right, you don't run out of pay that I spoke about right. that you have to, you know, gather. So you start the level and the noise is already happening. Yeah. And you don't even have to, like, run to get some, like, get. you could just hit, jump, and start flying, like, like without any takeoff mechanism. And you don't run out of pee? You don't run out of pee for the entire level. For it only the entire level. one level. So oh. if you get hit, for example, in the air, which sometimes I put shit up there mm -hmm. to make sure you didn't screw around too yeah. much, right? Keep um, you honest. Yeah, keep you honest, right? <laughs> They would take it away from you. You didn't have it. And yep. the pee was really hard to get to. You could only get it from like random drops from the like houses with the things with the, what are they like boxes or whatever? Toad's houses. Yeah. Toad's with the houses. Treasure or I don't know if the slot machine sometimes would drop it, but like either way, like there was like ways to get it, but they were not like you just find it in the level. Right. Right. And the other thing too, is if you completed the level with your pee, 
you would still be Raccoon Mario for the next one. Mm -hmm. Like, you didn't lose your your tail and your ears. I want to speak to that for a second, because this has my favorite power-up D-level system of all the Marios, and they never made it come back ever again. Go ahead. Because it's, like, too good. So, Raccoon goes to not small. It goes to big. Yep, so does fire. And, yeah, and, and anything above just big goes back to big. So, you have, like, two levels of shield. Yeah. Like, Right away from like just just being like raccoon or or fire flower or some of the suits which we didn't even talk about yet. But the point is, this is huge as far as like making the game easier. If you ask me, yes. And this is only in the United States version, uh, right? In Japan, they don't, they don't have this in Japan. You go small Mario, even right. when you have a power up. It's kind of bullshit actually for the American audience because it does make the game very easy. It makes it a lot easier, yeah. And when again. We wanted the easier game. We didn't want that crappy Super Mario 2 Lost Level shit. But I feel you know? this this is elegant in the way it's done. That's a nice but word. It doesn't feel like you're being babied because it because to me as a kid, I didn't understand that why when I went from Fire Flower, which was like a level up from big. Yeah. I was like, why do I not go back to big? Yeah, no, like it, I did, get it. it didn't make any sense. I think World retains that, Quinn. You just lose your power up. Um, does I think it? so, yeah. Okay, yeah. But let's talk about the suits, because you mentioned some suits. So not only do you have Fire Flower and the Raccoon, you know, the leaf that gives you the ability to fly, there are three suits which you will sometimes find either in a Toad's House, which Toad's House, by the way, is where you go in, and they're scattered around all the world maps. Mm-hmm. You go in and you get to pick an item from three treasure chests, or sometimes, depending on the Toad House, there's only one item in there. Right. There's also an underground, like, not bonus game, but, you know, like, where you get coins and shit, and then the big question block yeah. sometimes pops out a suit. And those suit might be the hammer suit. This suit is some bullshit. I as love far as, it. Like, the enemies are concerned, because you can just tear, tear almost tear, anything. Tear it up. It operates like fire flower, On right? Where steroids. You, but instead, you shoot hammers into the sky, and they're, like, invincible. <laughs> yes. Like, it's ridiculous. Like, they, they go through shit. You know how the fireball kind of, like... bounce off them. balls. Yeah, the, balls. yeah, like, they don't... It's different. Yeah, and it, it is a really good power. So, like, fuck those Hammer Brothers from Mario 1, because right. now you're throwing the hammer. You've got the power. Also, if you duck, you turn into what looks like a buzzy beetle, and you're fire-resistant. Yes, you're, you have shields. <laughs> Like on top of it. It's, it's a, very clever. It's a good suit, but they make sure to not make it too common. Uh-huh. There's also a frog suit, which I think is a genius idea because there's a lot of swimming levels. And what's different here than the first two games is when you're in an area with water, you can almost always actually go into the water and not die. Right. If you don't flap, I think there's like some stages where like only a couple where it's like, oh, it's too deep or yeah. something. Yeah. If you don't flap, you will drown. Right. But if you flap to swim, Mm -hmm. you will stay afloat. However, there are some levels where you have to go underwater almost the duration. And what better way to swim underwater than be a frog? So the frog suit, right? It stinks butt when you're on land. Yeah, it's right? awful. It's awful. You can't even run. You do have a high jump, which is nice, like a higher than normal jump. Yes, but you you can't run. Like, you <laughs> you have look to, like an idiot. You have to hop. Like you're <laughs> yeah, screwed, like right? Suit. You can't get away from anything. But sometimes I would I would occasionally use it on land because the high hop you could get over some shit. Sure. Um, there were tricks with it. I mean, they are but amphibious. It's crazy swimming. Like it is like way too good. It's like it's way better. Yeah, like a hundred times better it, than like brilliant. regular swimming. So the frog suit is one, and then the other one, very similar for the most part to the raccoon, Yes, is the tanuki suit. I love this suit because... Fuzzy little brown raccoon suit. You know why it's good is because already the fu- the, the flying thing was overpowered, right? Yes. It was pretty good. Yes. What if we add the ability to, like, <laughs> if you hit down and run, you turn into a statue and you're invincible? Yes. <laughs> and it's awesome. Right. And you can kill certain things or yeah. not get hurt by certain things. Yeah, yeah, it's it's actually like it to me. It's 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 flower like flower leaf thing on like steroids. Like it's like yeah. the better version. It's the better version. It's of probably the, the best suit in the game. I love the Tanuki suit. Yeah, it's it's either that or the hammer. But the hammer's like more rare. 
The hammer is, I think, the rarest, right? right of the yeah. three suits. Because I think it's like way overpowered. Like you could tell the makers uh, yeah. like knew. Like if it's kind of this is kind of bullshit. It kills shit that like the enemies they see fireballs, they laugh at the fireballs. Yeah. The hammers kill that shit. Like the spiky guys, yeah. like they can't beat that yeah. shit. Like, oh fuck. Uh, it's like, okay, don't, <laughs> okay. don't don't shoot, right? We're sorry, we're sorry. Yeah. There's also a, a power up of sorts, but you don't get it as a regular item, you get it from stealing it from a Goomba called Karibo's shoe. Yes, this. It's this is a weird one. It's like a green stocking that you can hop into and then you can hop on things that you can't touch with any suit. Yeah. Like you can hop on spikes and stuff like that. It doesn't bother it. There's Yeah, certain... it, it's got like an invincibility of walking on shit. It's pretty cool, but like you... spikes just do not affect it. But you can't retain it throughout levels. It's not right. it doesn't go in your inventory. What is your inventory? Well, on the world map, if you hit A, you go into a level. If you hit B, you will flip over the scoreboard thing, and you will. Which, by the way, that alone <laughs> is just like it almost feels like a secret. That, I love the, the, it. Fa- the way they handle it, where it's like it flips the scoreboard, yes. like it's like what? So now you can actually stock up items, right? Uh huh. Mushrooms, star men, fire flowers, any of the suits we just mentioned. Some other things too, which we'll talk about. And you can use them to start a level with. Now, I want to say this. It's not like how world... If you've never played 3, I don't know who I don't hasn't. Know but why you're listening to this But thing. if, say, you only played World, right, and you're like, oh, stock up, I know about that, like the thing in the top yeah, where no. you can... It's, it's, it so doesn't it's fall not, from the sky. It's, well, I'm saying it's not something you can collect in the stage, like Super Mario World. No, you get these in Toad's houses. Yeah, they only come from, like, the drops, like, from the like the bonuses and yes. stuff. Good. Yeah. Thank you for clarifying that, because yeah. that's true. You only get them from the bonus games. Yeah. Like the roulette one, Toad's house, stuff like yeah. that. What's cool about that is you can use them strategically. If you see you're going into a water level and you have a frog suit, yes. you put on the frog suit. Right. If you know you're about to start a level, let's say you just got your ass kicked, there's a million enemies as soon as you start it. Yeah. Start with a star man if you have one. Yeah, most of the suits are items, and that kind of gives the suits an element of, like, pre-planning to them. Yes. Right? It, because, like, the frog suit really is absolutely freaking useless. So you, you're kind of just burning it on a water level, and, like, you want to just dump that thing as soon as yeah. you get to... Like, you're like, this is not going to work, yes. like, on the next level. But it was always so cool to, like, store up all these items, because you have, like, four rows of inventory. Mm-hmm. I think it's, like, 28 items or something like that. It's pretty fun. The some of the other items that you might get are uh, Jugum's cloud, which is the cloud that like uh, Lakitu uses. It's so good. You can use this to just skip past a level that you don't want to play. One level. One it level. only works. You know what? It makes sense on the context, right? Because it means you're flying over the level. Yes, right? exactly. You're well, I th- or you're hiding in the cloud. I think. Yeah. Yeah. It's something like that. There's also the music box. Now, why might you need this? Mm-hmm. Roving around every world map. Well, first of all, can we just say? What a pain in the balls this is because, okay, these, like you said, they're roving around. So every time you go to the map for any purpose, right? You, you know, you be a level, you die, anything that boots you back to the map. You do a two player game and that's over. Yeah. There's, um, Hammer Brother guys. Just like the, they're like roaming the map. It's, they're not, they're like, if you bump into them, you go into like a battle zone you against them, right? But they move every time. So sometimes you'll be like, they'll be a couple blocks away and you'll be like, oh, I'm safe, right? And then you die. And then they'll be like, almost like a wind, like as if it's their turn to move. Yes. And they'll move and they could just like run into they you. They could run you, into you, yes. Right. And you're just like, okay, I got to fight him now. Like before you even get to like do anything. And the music is like all om- ominous. It's like, dun, 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 dun. yeah, it's like, <laughs> better fucking kill them. Fuck these fucking hammer. No. I would actually like say derogatory things to the music because I did not like them. So that wasn't just impromptu, was it? I'd be like, fuck these fucking. <laughs> and if you beat them though you do get an item and that would go into your inventory yeah. so it could be but they were hard they like, could they, be hard they were very elusive is my, is the hammer brothers in this game right they always put them on like there'd be like two of them yes. and like there'd be they'd be like there's Two levels of bricks but, and but shit. But they, they could technically go on the ground too, so they could be up to three levels. Yeah. And they would like switch if you let them go. And it'd be like, dude, it was really hard to kill the one on the ground floor, so you'd want to wait till he jumped up. Yeah, and get right? him from underneath usually. Right, yeah. Unless you hit him with firepower, then it's a lot easier. Yeah, still, but still with firepower, you still got to run in there. Like, you might lose your firepower. The worst is when you have like a power up and, you lose and it. they run in and you run, that thing runs <sighs> into you and then they. 
they hammer you and what? you lose you you're able to like get past it but you lost power over yeah it. it's like, like oh my god like scarcely do you feel more naked than going into a hammer brothers by accident while wearing a frog suit yes or if say you have you know what sucks a lot if what? you have the hammer suit which oh. is op and the hammer brothers like hit you and you lose it because That's, it's like damn yeah. you so the music box was invented and if you get this item it's probably one of the more useless items but it still has a purpose if you're really just not in the mood to deal with the hammer brothers you use the music box item it changes the map screen music to like happy it's like a, a lullaby. lullaby yeah and then they actually go to sleep yeah, and you, you just walk right past them <laughs> it doesn't last forever but it is helpful it's such a weird thing that i almost feel like it's like some debug like, i know like, right? you know what i mean like there was some code to get infinite music boxes so that the makers of the game could just like walk past them or whatever probably that is also like probably that's why the clouds exist too so the make you know oh what, wow right you know what i'm saying that's funny man i yeah. didn't think of that uh, a couple more items and then we're gonna get into the worlds and the enemies we'll start with the enemies but another item is the warp whistle yes. which uh, the whistle was ripped right out of zelda the sprite mm-hmm. and the warp whistle you collect from again hammer brothers toad's house that probably type of one thing. of the most known items in the game because i feel like everyone and their mother knew how to get the two in the first level so you could get to level yeah. eight like it was so easy Toot your flute yeah that's right yeah. and what would happen you can use that at any time and it would skip you all the way to warp zone and depending on which world you were in you would have different tiers go to, to select one, it, so how it worked is that one warp would take you to the next set of like levels right. so there would be like three two. levels on a line there'd be two three four yeah was one line right five six seven was the second line yeah and eight was on its own line eight, so if you use two yep. in a row because it would dunk you to the second one and then the third one yep. bada bing bada boom you're at the end bada bing bada boom michael yeah. Quinn. and it was just useful if more for people that had already played the game a bunch of times and they just want to skip around i mean if yeah. you're playing it for the first time you don't even know what these shits do probably or yeah. how to find them you know yeah and there was an anchor I barely ever Who used the fuck it. Ever used what? this? What? <laughs> what? I don't even remember what it really did. First of all, you have to die in an airship to yeah. even need to use it, right? Yeah. And if you're really good, you don't die in the airship, especially oh, the early ones. Bring the airship to you or something. This anchors the airship, Quinn, so it doesn't move around, and you don't have to keep fetching it. <laughs> this feels like again, like a debug thing. Yeah, like, it does it not. To keep trying the airship over and yeah, over again, yeah. maybe. Let's talk about, though, these friggin' enemies, because these have been probably my favorite part of recapping these games, Quinn, is running down these oh, enemies. This is Joe's special. So, this, is, this is what he loves. Now, a couple of enemies carry over from Super Mario Brothers, or from Mario Brothers to the minigame Crab, the Flies, they all and the have Fireballs. Newly, they ha- they're all newly animated. They're all newly animated. But the classics here, let's just start with... The Goomba has returned, Michael yes. Quinn. In they- the form that I seem to, like, Goombas, this was, like, the true... They look better than the originals. I would say they look a little better, yeah. Because they have, like, mouths now. Yeah, they... They're not, like, spooky looking. There's a two variants also. There's yeah. the the lighter one, the darker one, which has, like, mean teeth. It's yeah, like, to why see is the one teeth. of them, like, Dracula or something? Dracula? Yeah. <laughs> More like Count Chocula. <laughs> so they're still the most basic enemy. They're in the first world, and yeah. you still stomp on them and kill them. And then the next step up is still the Koopa Troopa. Right. The green and the red variety. If you recall, the green one will keep going in one direction. They'll fall off cliffs. The mm-hmm. red turns around when it reaches the end. And then there's the flying variant, also from Super Mario Bros. 1, the paratrooper. Yep. Yes. We got a new one here. You remember the piranha plant from Super Mario yes, 1, that right? Yeah, pain in the butt, right? Well, how about if we give it like a head and it spits fire it's at you? It's got like at a diagonal. Yeah. it's like, it shoots like a literal, like the fireball that Mario has out yeah. of its mouth. It's insulting. I hate that thing. Fuck it. It's called the Venus fire trap. Bull crap. And they, <laughs> they're ubiquitous, Quinn. They yeah. are ubiquitous. Oh, the, the Venus fire trap and the piranha plant are used like interchangeably like everywhere yeah. in this game. They they really like the, the Venus fire trap. Oh, like, they a love lot. them. That thing's like all over the place. Yep. Uh, making their return from Super Mario 1 are the Para Goombas. Those are the Goombas with yes. wings. Uh huh. There's also Micro Goombas. And yes. These things are dropped by the Para Goombas and they basically treat you like fleas, like they swarm you. But and they, they make you go slow. Yeah, they and drag you, gotta, like, you down. you gotta jump to like get them off of you, like fleas. Assholes. Yeah. They don't hurt you though, which is weird. No, that's true. They don't hurt you. I think the real trap of them is like, what if we put them before you have to make a running jump? And then you lose all your momentum. I think that's like the idea behind them. You think that's what it is? Yeah. Yeah, maybe you're right. There's also the Boomerang Brothers. So you remember the Hammer Brothers? Well, now we got their brothers, I guess, brother, that throw boomerangs at you. I hate this thing. (laughs) 
This like, almost gives me as much of a headache as the Hammer Brothers. They're annoying. Like, uh, they're so irritating. Very irritating. Buzzy Beetle has returned, and he's mm-hmm. the same. You can't yep. sh- can't kill him with firepower, but the Hammers will. The Hammer Brothers have returned, and they are as the annoying new, as the ever. New sprite, but they're just like the boomerang guys. Yep, same thing. Yeah. Bullet Bill, not to be confused with Bullet Biff. Yeah, true Bullet Bill. <laughs> he's real. not screwing around here. He's returned uh, with a little bit more of a face now than he had. He's got arms. He's yeah. got arms, yeah, true. Cannon has returned from Super Mario Brothers 2. Remember Cannon? Yes, it's Diagonal Cannon, which is is a a staple, I would say, of the um the airship levels. It's there yes. are all there's tons of them. Yes, there are. Right. Some of them shoot actual cannonballs, but some shoot bob bombs. Yes. Who have also returned. There's only a couple that shoot that there's usually one or two in the whole stage that shoot bob bombs. <laughs> but the cannonballs, what's interesting about them is they have this like they're very slow. They almost like fly. Yeah, right? you can ride them. You can, like, jump you? on them. Can't you? You can jump on them and, like, kill them like they're, like, Oh, yeah, that's enemy. what I'm thinking of, yeah. Right, and it's, like, you can use them to, like, you get a good bounce off them. Like, yes, you can, and you, you can, can hop ahead. Yeah, you can, like, jump over a bunch of shit jumping on them. Good point. There's also uh, the turtle cannon. Now, what these do is shoot bullet bills, and these were from the first Super Mario Brothers, if you recall. Right. Dry Bones makes his debut. Ah, an interesting enemy. So this is one of the spooky enemies, right? Yes. So imagine a Koopa Troopa, but it's dead. It's just the bones, right? Skeleton, yeah. But it, it kind of reminds me of um, Red Skeletons in Castlevania. Red Skeleton, the comedian? No, Red oh. Skeleton. Sorry. Red Skeletons in Castlevania, right? Where if you kill it, it's not really dead. Right. It's, it's only the bones are like on the ground. Right. And then it will revive after a certain period of time. But this can be annoying in certain cases, like especially like they love to put them in spots. You yeah. have to like wait for something to swing or something yeah, like or that. or the level to scroll. There's like some kind of thing that you have to wait and it's like, oh, why don't we put one of these bastards here? Because then you're like waiting and you're like, oh no, don't wake up. Don't wake up. Don't wake up, right? It's yeah. Like, you can kill him again. It's yeah. not, you knock him down again. He's but. just a, because what it is is, is he'll come over to you and you'll have to take care of him and then you'll miss your opportunity on like whatever you're waiting for. Correct. That's like what he's there for. They're more of a nuisance. Right. right? Yeah. I'm very happy to announce that making his return here is uh, Padobu. Nobody cares. The, uh, the fire, I do. Yeah. The fireball from the lava. Making a debut is Roto Disc, that waffle looking thing. Another thin. pain in the balls yeah. thing, right? It's like they're just these stationary things where there's a disc coming around it, but they're they're kind of like the chain things. It's the oh, the fire stick. Yeah, except you can go through it. The, the chain is invincible. It's kind of yeah. like it's kind of like it's like a magnetic field kind of situation, yep. right? Yeah. Roto Disc. There's also Fire Snake, which is a flame. Basically, I don't like this thing. <laughs> Another thing. A few fireballs. <laughs> yeah. There is the pile driver micro Goomba. What a weird enemy. What is it, Quinn? It's a little baby so it's Goomba? A, it's one of those micro Goombas, but like a he's got a block and he's using it to like launch himself. Yeah, it's weird. It's very strange. It's yes. a very strange enemy. Very strange enemy. There's Chain Chomp, which yes. is uh, supposed to be like a dog on a leash. I think that's now, where Chain they got Chomp it from. would be in a bunch of shit. Like, yeah. remember he was in that Zelda game boy game and then he was in mario 64 and like yeah for some reason chain chomp is very well remembered yeah he's like in other things like i find him to be annoying yeah firepower can't kill him right can only I hammers think he's kill like him? unkillable hammers can. maybe hammers but i mean when do you have the opportunity True. right there's also the other brother of hammer and boomerang they're not as common not and as prevalent they're dark red and they are known of course as fire Spits brothers out fireball out of his mouth or something yeah that's exactly what they do now, there's this little bozos here that... Uh, <laughs> this thing. <laughs> this might be the worst enemy in the game. These guys hide in airships almost exclusively. Yeah. I mean, they're in other stuff, but they're kind of like moles, and they yeah. hide in holes. Uh-huh. And when they pop up, and they look, and they find Mario, they throw wrenches at him! There's a very specific thing that this enemy does yeah. that's unlike the other enemies, right? Rocky wrench, by Rocky the way. wrench. Two things. The wrenches are like persistent, like they never go away until they get past you. Right? Yeah, and you can't just, defeat them. Can you, you can't kill them at all. It's very annoying. Right? But, but the worst thing that Rocky Wrench does is because he comes up and down, he has a delay before he throws his wrench. And if you jump on him only from the angle of the wrench, you can kill him if you hit the back side of the head. Yes. But if you hit the front side of the head, it counts as a hit. If the yeah, if the wrench like hits your foot or something. It's bullcrap. <laughs> like, and that's that's the thing. That's what kills me about them is like I usually tend to like wait a hot second after they rise. Yeah. So that they throw the damn thing because yeah. they are because I don't want to like chance that I'm going to hit the front, and it's like very, very particular which part of it you can't hit yes. while he's holding it. 
You can firepower them, though. Yes, but let's be honest. This game really wants you to have the leaf a lot. Well, like, yeah. Like, it's That's not... The cornerstone. Yeah, like, the fire flower is not the end-all, be-all, and you don't Sorry. have it as much. Yeah, you're right. It's yeah. not as prevalent as yeah. it was in the first game. It's yeah. true. It's true. There's the angry sun, and by that I don't mm-hmm. mean Shane McMahon. Oh, shut up! The angry sun is, um... Well, believe it or not, a sun with it's an angry face. The sun. Yes. And it attacks you, though. But what's weird is you can kill him. You can. But you have to throw a Koopa shell at it. That's the only way yeah. to kill it. Or maybe hammers. I always thought... This is my theory, fanfic here. I think he's not the sun. I think he's a... Like an imposter. Is it like Lakitu or something behind yeah, that? Yeah, he's like some fucking bullshit, I right? think, yeah, it's not the real sun. Because why could you kill the sun? Like, how would you even do that? We'd all die. The whole planet would be... Mushroom world would be gone. Yeah, and that would be terrible for right? all the kings. Yeah, so I think he's pretending to be the sun, oh. and then he comes and gets you. So he's not really his son. Yeah. You should take a paternity test. Uh-huh. See what I did there? Not mm-hmm. very good. Uh, there's a tornado. It's only in one world, and it's a tornado that you have to jump past or you get caught up in. But remember you get it. some nice elevation if you get to the top of it. You do get some serious elevation on that one. Yeah. Uh, remember Boo Diddley? Mm-hmm. Of course you do. Boo Diddleys are the little ghosts. Another that, spooky enemy. Yep, they're in the fortresses and mini fortresses. Yeah, it's Boo Diddley. I thought he was just Boo. Everyone called him Boo. Well, in the beginning it was Boo Diddley. Okay. That's a takeoff of Bo Diddley. Yeah, I get it. <laughs> I, I get what they're going for. It's just nobody called him Boo Diddley. They called him Boo. He's a Boo. Why do they call him Boo? Because he's a ghost. Boo. He's a scary boo. And what happens is, if you have your back turned, he's approaching you with an angry face, but as soon as you turn around, he covers his eyes like a scared little baby. I think this is a clever enemy, and this is another yes, enemy is. that would make it into a bunch of games. Yes. Like, they would, like, this became a very useful thing in their level design. You could throw ghosts in certain spots. So would you say he's making his day boo? Yeah, stop. <laughs> He's also in, just invincible, yeah. by the way. Like, you can't kill him. Can hammers? I think hammers can. I, I'm I not don't ha- underestimate the power of the a hammer The hammers are some bullshit, but like... I don't know, man. You can't really kill him any other way. You can't firepower him. Yeah, you he can't care. do any... He's dead. He's a ghost. He's a ghoul. The ghoul. Uh, thwomps make their debut. Remember mm-hmm. thwomps? These thwomps. are fucking rocks with teeth. Like, sharp, pointy <laughs> teeth that bastards. attack bastards. They come down real quick, too. Yeah, and they appear in the 16-bit sequel to this yeah. game. Now, also, there's the sideways version of Fuck them. Fuck those, <laughs> man. <laughs> sideways thwomps. Yeah, it's like, hey, well, I'm going this way instead. <laughs> yeah, like, oh, excuse me. <laughs> yeah. Jerk. Remember Bloobers? They're back, man. Yeah, Bloobers are here. Bloobers have returned, the little octopus mm-hmm. thing. They also have bloober babies now and the bloober babies usually travel with a mama bloober called bloober with kids yes bloober with kids is the one you see more often the baby bloober by itself not so much <laughs> bloober with kids sounds like i a didn't even know YouTube series. okay first of all what i didn't know that that was supposed to be his kids i thought he was like more of a, a creature that had a tail oh no that's little baby bloobers man Oh, shoot. Think of the children, I didn't, I didn't even realize no, this all these years. Baby bloopers. Huh. Remember Lava Lotus? I don't. No. Uh, you it, know, like, this is a, what is that, like, the bottom of the water levels, like, a couple of times? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, what they are is impervious to fireballs and stuff. I think, yeah. again, it's either Hammer Brothers or, some, or nothing. I don't remember. <laughs> they throw fire at Why you. are so many of the enemies Hammer Brothers or nothing? Well, because it's like, put a lot of uh, weight on the suits, Yeah, right? the Hammer suit is, like, ridiculous. Cheap cheeps have returned from mm-hmm. the first game. They're the fish, and they they can float. Thanks, they come I out hate of the them. water. Yeah, me too. But now we've added the more annoying variant of cheap cheeps called Boss Bass. Boss Bass, the giant cheap cheap. He can just eat you. Yeah, and just take you away. Like you, like sometimes, and it's quick. He just comes out of the water. He'll grab you and take you're you dead. with him, and you're dead. You're and dead. It's just like there. And what's strange about it is, unlike a lot of enemies, there's no hit. It just like literally swallows Scoops you, you up, and yep. you you see it like leave, <laughs> yeah. and you die when it leaves. Yeah. You don't die when it like you know what I'm saying. Like, it is a nice touch though. Yeah, isn't it's it? like <laughs> you don't take damage. You just die when it leaves. It's one of those enemies where you're like, what the hell happened? Yeah. Like what? Like you're confused. You're like in a daze because there's like a delayed death. I love it. Yeah. And using the same sprites, so sometimes this gets confusing to people, is Big Bertha. Right. The difference here is Big Bertha has the little baby cheap cheeps in their mouth, and they come out of Big Bertha's mouth, and that's the attack. Yeah. Yeah. Big Bertha doesn't swallow you. Boss Bass does. Yeah. How about using that sentence somewhere else? Stop. Lakitu, Quinn, your favorite. He's back. Oh, this dick. If you forgot about Lakitu, folks, that's the, uh, the Koopa. In a cloud yep. that throws shit at you. See, we got a weapon against him. We have clouds also. We have our own fucking cloud. Yeah, so yeah, now, cloud. now that the score is a little evened. You know that song, Get Off of My Cloud? Rolling Stones wrote that about Lakitu. Probably. That's enough! Thank you. Boo Diddley. Yeah. 
Jelectro. Yes. This enemy, what is this, another underwater shit? Yeah, Jelectro doesn't move. Jelectro is more of an obstacle, because it's like an electric yeah. jellyfish. He's just there. It's an obstacle that yeah. you swim around. Uh, Spike. Okay, this guy. He's pretty rare, but he's like a little green mini Koopa that pulls, like, what is it, balls out of his mouth? It's like they're spiky balls or some yeah. shit. This thing the is opposite of Mr. Bucket. fucking annoying, <laughs> because... You jump over him, but then he, like, raises his head and, like, shoots it into the fucking sky. And you're like, what the, like, hey, stop. Like, right? You really don't like Spike, huh? I never liked him. I never him. had a problem with Spike. Bothersome. What about Babom? He's back. Babom, ba I would say, Babom in this game <laughs> is the most useful to Mario. Because you can pick them up and chuck them. Yes, right? this is true. There are a couple... There, now, there's two versions, right? There's mm -hmm. one with like the little crank on it, and yeah. there's one that just explodes, right? Right. There's also a rocket engine, which I don't even consider an enemy. It's, it's just, just an obstacle that's always in the airship. the airship stages. It's like another one. It's like a thing that shoots fire up. <laughs> but it's like a rocket engine, but it's always pointing into the sky, which is weird. Yeah. Shouldn't it be on the bottom pointing down to yes. propel the yes. airship? It looks like... Or at least on the back... Going to like you know outward, make, so it's a way to propel forward. Yes, not going up. Why is it always going up? That would shoot the ship down. That's right. Shoot the shit, Stoyven. Yeah, shut the shit. Shut the shit. There's also stretch, which is like boo, but on a bed. <laughs> like can't, a they can't like get out. <laughs> yeah, like, so it's just, just very strange. So it just like travels the bed. Yeah. Nice. There's a stage world four where there's um. Large enemies on large everything. So and you can switch to small sometimes you too. Can, yes. That's like a switching mechanism in, in the within the game. Yeah, yeah. So there's colossal Koopa Paratroopa, mm -hmm. which is a very large, big ass Koopa Troopa. Yeah, Grand Goomba. Yeah, it's funny. Just a big ass Goomba. Of course, Peronicus Giganticus. Only Nintendo would give these names. The Latin. Yeah, like <laughs> it's really unnecessary. Uh, the giant Koopa. And of course, it wouldn't be complete without another of the Hammer Brother, but I love the touch here. You know, you have your regular Hammer Brother. Well, right. what, what would an uh, oversized Hammer Brother be carrying but a sledge sledgehammers? Hammer. Yes. <laughs> so you have Sledge Brothers. Yeah. These are hard to defeat. Are these the ones that can smash the ground and shake it too? If yes. I recall? Like, oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. They stun. So annoying. They, they can stun you. Yeah. Not good. Spinies. Oh, look, are this asshole's back. <laughs> Spiny. Spinies are back. Look at Spinies. Like, and, I, and his I, eggs. Is it just me or like Spinies like universally hated? Oh, because you can't anyone, fireball them. Like, I don't think anyone likes the spiny. Yeah, they're big jerks. They're big jerks. Uh, Missile Bill is Bullet Bill's friend who is flashing and he is homing. Like, yeah, he turns he'll, around. He'll, he'll come back to get you. Yep. Hot Foot is a little don't flame. Want, don't like Hot Foot. What did Hot Foot ever do to you? Because he's scary. He's a, he, oh, because he he's another off one, the candle. He's another one of those enemies that appears to be something else and you turn your back and then he, like, starts walking. Like in Super Mario 2 when the gate guy like yeah. comes off the wall. Just don't like it. Okay. It's a trick enemy. How about Buster Beetle? Any thoughts on him? Jerk. He's the one that throws the blocks. Yeah, especially in the slidey stages, because these are usually where this is. Yes. Walking um, piranhas. It's same like, thing. oh, just, uh, like, I'm, because I'm, those things you're going fast, you're sliding down, right? Yes. And then this jerk is just throwing <laughs> shit. At, you're like, wait, get it. What the fuck? Like, I'm coming down like a hill. I'm like, this guy's just shooting, like, throwing boxes at me or whatever. Boxes, yeah. <laughs> it's like, get out of here. We're at FedEx. Yeah. Got the walking piranhas, which are almost cute little fellas there. The little yeah. white little plants. These guys. A little rare. Karibo's Goomba. We mentioned the shoe. Well, yeah. you can steal it from the Goomba that hides in the shoe. Exactly. There's Muncher. Ass muncher. It's a little piranha plant. They're little piranhas that if you f they don't attack you, but if you fall onto them, you mm -hmm. die. However, you can turn them into coins with a block. Remember? Muncher. I don't like that <laughs> name. <laughs> There's fire chomp, which is like a fire variant of chain chomp. Yes. Para beetles, which are red and they float. But you can walk on these guys. Yes, right? that's it's what like, I was thinking of with yeah. the cannonballs before. Right. Para beetles can be useful. Yeah, so they have an, a mechanism where when they if they're if you're on them and they're flying, yep. they can't go up anymore. But if you jump up a little bit, you can use them to like go with their elevation. So you can like, okay, like I landed on him, he's stuck kind of yes. right, but he's still in the air. And then I can jump, jump. a little bit to the right yep. or the left, depending on which direction he's going, and he can kind of take me up. Yes, exactly. Right? So they're actually kind of useful. But he has no forward propel while you're on him so like you can only that jumping method is the only way to go have full motion with him yep and i think they're actually yeah they're only in one world five yeah. six remember patui that's the piranha plant another enemy it's like <laughs> how high do i have to jump to get over this stupid thing because they're like blowing spiky balls at you annoying 
There's yeah. the spiny cheap cheap, which is very rare. They're only in one level. Do we need that? No. Yeah. <laughs> one level. You know what else we don't need? Fiery walking piranha. Nice. <laughs> I don't even remember that anime. What about Bowser statue? Is this only because it shoots fire out of it? Lasers, lasers, lasers yes. sorry. And it's like technically, it's not, it's mechanical. It's just sitting there. I know. And huge bullet. So this, the, there's cannonballs that shoot, there's like bigger cannons. It's real. And these these shoot out really fast, though, huge yes. bullet, right? It's like, they, these are one of those things where you see them and you're like, wow, if I could get, because you get such good elevation off jumping off a cannonball. Yes. Every time I see those, I'm like, oh, I want to catch it, because if I can jump off this thing, yes. oh my God, I'd probably go like into the stratosphere, right? <laughs> the stratosphere, like, yeah. yeah. No, but they can, they can actually be useful, believe yeah. it or not. So those are all the enemies. Yes, we covered all of them. Let's talk about the mini boss, and then we're going to talk about the worlds and their respective couplings. Okay. So the mini boss is a Koopa known as Boom Boom. So in every fortress, there's usually a Boom Boom. It's the dumbest enemy. I don't like this thing. The only thing that he does that can be mildly annoying is he turns spiky when you go to jump on him sometimes, or he occasionally flies. Yeah, but there's like a timing to him that's the same every yeah, single time. It's so not that hard. That's why he's stupid. It's because he doesn't really change. Right. So it's like you, you have a method to beat him every... He's always in the same starting position when you find him. Correct. You just jump on him, jump away for a second, jump on him, and then like you can jump on him while he's jumping. Mm-hmm. Like It's just... It's, it's very easy. So, the world's... We're going to go through those now. I'm going to just walk you guys it, it, briefly because, you know, it's we're talking about world maps. It's kind of hard to, like, describe all of it. Yep. But I do want to mention something. In the original United States release, because there was, like, one quick variant that they did after, the names of the, the worlds were more akin to their Japanese counterparts. Okay. But then it was dumbed down where everything ended in land. So I'm going to give you both in case you've okay. heard both. But World 1, no matter what, is known as Grassland. It's a very simple little screen. It's got that... to be the very welcoming yeah, area. Yeah, it's the 1-1, one, one, right? Yeah. Where... Yeah. You know, and it's very pleasant. And then you go into 1-1 one, one and you get the classic Super Mario Brothers 3 level theme, the overworld theme. Yep. There's two of them. There's the kind of reggae one laid back in 1-1, in one, one, and then there's like the piano one in 1-2. One, This is a very easy level, and it's supposed to be, right? It's the intro. Yeah, it, exactly. It's the intro. This is what this game is. It, it, you know what? Is it even hard? No, it's, it, it's totally, not, right? It's totally intro down to the map. Like, notice there's a optional side path. That's to show you you can do that. Yeah, good point. Right? It's like after three... You could either go to the Toad House or skip right to four. To four. Or you can even go do the card game. I usually didn't play four until I learned that you could get a um, a white mushroom house out of four, couldn't you, or something like yeah, that? Yeah, I, w- I learned at some point that four dropped some shit, yeah. and then I started doing it. Where you have I, to get like, yeah. a certain amount of coins, you get a special coin chip. There's a lot of secrets, yeah, there's like a that- There's a reason to do four, yes. even though it's completely optional. Yes. And the uh, the Koopa kid that has taken over uh, Grassland is Larry Koopa. Now, there was a rumor that he was named after uh, Larry King. It is not true, but just for the record. Once you beat him, you go to Desert Land, uh, which was originally known as Desert Hill. The map is a little bit bigger. This has some new tricks here. You have the uh, certain point where there's like a brick that if you break it with another weapon that no one uses, the hammer. Yeah, the hammer that only, it's only for that. Yeah, it's only to like break shit on the map. Essentially, they might as well just made it a key. It's basically a key. Yeah, but it all it gets you is like a, you can go to a toad house. Mm -hmm. Now, this is a desert themed world and the music is more chill. And I like the design of the map. I like the design of the levels. It's not that the challenging. The thing I like is that there's a lake or something in the top right of it. That's It says three. <laughs> yeah, it's like so world. stupid. It's really yeah, dumb. Yeah. Uh, and Morton Koopa Jr. is the boss of this one. And he's a fat-looking bald one. He is. Now, I would imagine he was named after Morton Downey Jr., but no. I don't know if that's true or not. Just tell them. What did he say? You heard him. Step out. Oh, what did he say? World 3, once you defeat Morton Koopa Jr., is Waterland, also known as Oceanside. This one is awesome because... 
I it's, like this one. It's all split into like little islands, right? One of the cool things is you can actually take a rowboat to like Toad's houses and shit. Yeah, so there's a boat, <laughs> but also one concept it introduces that I think it doesn't introduce, but it uses it more so than the previous level. Mm-hmm. In the desert level, right, there was the concept that you could use um, uh, pipes. And what's cool about them is, like, they're on the map, but you go in them, and they're actually traversable, but, yes. like, there's nothing in them. But right, it's, right. It's, it, There's no real reason why they even had to do that, but essentially, like, it's just a nice added little detail of, like, oh, you get to be Mario and go thrump one pipe to the other, and you appear on the other part, the of, other the part of the map. Yep. But this one has tons of them. Yes. Like, it has ones that, like, go to different islands and stuff. I love it. Yeah. I love that you can literally break a brick. To get on a rowboat, to sail to like bonus games, to sail to another Toad's house, and to get a glimpse of, but not be able to access. You need a pipe to do that. Yes, yeah. the fortress. It's but then there's also other pipes because here's the thing: is you're you're kind of in search for the pipe that's going to lead to the castle. Yes, and I think that's why they give you the boat so you can see <laughs> that there's a pipe over there, and you're like, oh, uh, okay, I got to go find. Like one of these pipes on this map is going to go there. Good point, Quinn. Right? Yeah, you're absolutely right. Great level. I. I right. really love the design of the map, the worlds. There's a lot of frog suit usage in this one. Yeah. Really good. But if you defeat the Koopling, Wendy O, yes, a female Koopa who shoots candy rings and named over when named after Wendy O. Williams from yes. the band of the Plasmatics, you will go to Giant Land. Yes. Also known as Big Island. Right. The most memorable world because of this giant situation, right? Where like everything's big, but it has a factor where like you can change things to be small. In some of the levels, In yeah. some of the levels, there's like a, a switch almost. Yeah, it's like five or six. It's one of them. I can't I forget remember which, which one, but it, it's, it's a really cool gimmick level. Very memorable for Mario players. Do you think they were just screwing around with the sprite scaling and they're like, hey, why don't we just make the whole level like this? Yeah, it really does world. feel very experimental and I actually appreciate that. What's really cool about this stage to me is right off the bat you have two pipes that yeah. you can choose from. Right from the start screen. Right? It's like, okay, where do you want to go? Yeah, right? It's like point. It's immediately making the player make a choice right at the beginning. And the wrong one takes you to a locked door next to the mini fortress yep. that you can't get through. Mm-hmm. And I think the right one is where you go right over the bridge or if you, I don't remember actually. I don't remember which is the, <laughs> I think the one that's down is the right one because it's out of view when you first Maybe. get on the map. Maybe. Yeah, but this is great. All the sprites are like double the size including yeah. the enemies. Like Quinn said, there's one of the levels where if you go in a pipe, it'll switch it to right Regular, yeah, which is fun. But I, lo- I always love this level. This, this whole level, world as a kid. This, this would be the level that I would like say. I was like, oh, I want to play one of the regular levels. This is the one I would go after. Yeah, yeah. I was. Like I was like, this is so cool. So much fun. All the Toad's houses yeah. are brown in this. Now one, the by next way. stage is interesting. I used to hate this as a kid because I felt like it was much longer. But it's not really. It's just the way it's like divided or whatever. Yes. Uh, by the way, Iggy Koopa is the Koopling oh, yes, in, in Giant Island, the smallest Koopa in Giant Island. Of right. course. How ironic. I guess he was named after Iggy Pop. I'm not mm-hmm. really sure, you know, from the Stooges. But anywho, yes, uh, Quinn is talking about Skyland, also known as The Sky. Now, I think from a level design construction or whatever's going on here. Overworld design, maybe? It's very cool. I think it's awesome. Right? It's a very cool idea. You start on the ground, and then there's like this tower. Yes. And you go into that, and then it pops you into the clouds. Yes. And it's like a whole, like... There's a ton of levels up here. Like most of the map, most of, it is, most of the map is in the sky. It's the sky. not at the ground. There's only like three or four levels if you include the tower, and a uh, five if you include the fortress too. But I love it on the sky map. You can see, yeah, below so you on the sky map. You can see where you came up from. I love right? it. It's like wow. It's very creative. It always made the f- level feel really long as a kid. Yes, it's not much longer than your normal, but it looks like it, right? Yeah, I love this level. Also, I think it's brilliant. There's a lot of platforming levels in the sky part. There's a lot of jumping, a lot of vertical scrolling. One thing I would say four and five is where they get their like creative on. Like they're like these are really off the wall these two, right? Sometimes literally. (laughs) Yeah, they're very odd odd as far as ideas are concerned. And I think that's like kind of what makes this game a masterpiece in a certain sense. It's like it's like every idea they could think of. Nothing's been the same so far. Yeah, We're that, five levels in. Everything's different. Yeah. Variety, challenges, but they all make sense. One of the things uh, about Mario 3 in general that we didn't mention is some levels are, for the first time, auto-scrolling, where the screen just keeps moving right. You have yeah, to go with like, it. Yeah, uh, where they're like, you're not 
sitting around here, Mario. <laughs> yeah. Like it's like you got to go right. Or some of them auto scroll up too. There's uh, vertical auto scrolls. Yeah, That's yeah. insane. We had yeah. never seen that in the sky in particular. Platforms and jumping, and you can't fall because the ground's not there anymore. Yeah. Just brilliant level design, man. Oh, the level design is absolutely the shine the thing that shines through in this in this game in the yeah 100 percent oh yeah mechanics and the gameplay have been refi- retained and refined from mario one mm-hmm. in terms of the fluidity the precision that's all still there right but now we have uh, such a larger playground to be in yeah and they just nailed it so if you get past roy koopa uh roy. named after allegedly roy orbison oh not roy rogers koopa <laughs> I mean, it was a rest of popular it was establishment. Very, very popular establishment. And he was yeah. a cowboy, you know. Right. A real cowboy. You go to Iceland, originally known as Iced Land. <laughs> now, this level... Guess, this guess what me, the theme of it is. Ice. <laughs> so it's very feared to me. Because, first it's of feared. all, the map music is scary. It's like... Beep, 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 Yeah, it is annoying. It's like very... It's scary. It's like a Hitchcock movie or something. A lot of the stages, of course, have the Mario trope, which didn't really exist until this game because it's not <laughs> well it wasn't in two where there was ice and you could yeah. slip yes yes it wasn't but two. like not in the proper mario games not not in the fake right yeah this yeah. is the first time it appears in a proper mario game right and like boy oh boy is it a pain in the balls right uh yes it is actually. yeah it's like it's very much annoying yeah so it's all ice all the time there's some snow levels there's like so you play through this whole bullshit right this level's long yeah, this man. is long there's one level towards the end where you finally like emerge from somewhere and it's not frozen. You're like, thank you. Yeah. Like it feels like you've been cold in real life. Yeah. You're like, oh God, this and, is horrible. And it's like, oh, the winter's over. I get to see the yeah. sun again. But I'll tell you what, man, there's some genius level design here where you have frozen coins mm-hmm. and you have to use firepower to break the ice and get it's to very cool item. It's just great stuff. Yep. I love it. And uh, they, let get me- their, they get their ice on, which. You know, after, to me, this game also is one of the, not the first, but one of the best examples in the NES era of, like, a lot of old Nintendo games had this trope of, like, you're going to go to every region and, like, experience every kind of weather, right? Yeah, it's, yeah. like, hot, cold, yeah. uh, forest, tropical, like, all this. F- then there'd be, like, a lava stage and, like, a mountain and, like, all like this game is like that. It's, yeah. like, all, all that kind of thing. All of that. So if you get past Lemmy Koopa, named after, I suppose, Lemmy Kilmeister from Motorhead, the Lemmy, of course. We know Lemmy. Yeah, Lemmy. You will go to World 7, uh, Pipe Land, also known as Pipe Maze, which is right. a bunch of different islands connected by pipes. Right. So the pipe concept that I mentioned earlier, this is that, like, this is, it's like... Final form? This is like the <laughs> like the whole stage is just pipes. It's pipes, pipes, pipes. Even the levels are like pipe Pipe levels. related, yeah. Yeah, like, where the, that's some of the ones I have the that go up. Oh, God, there's somewhere you have to use these platforms that move. Yeah. Here's a thing that we didn't even mention, because it's not technically an enemy. Those, mm-hmm. like, music block things that are bouncy. Yeah, the you know what? The, note the music note boxes, yeah, those are a pain in the butt. And they like to use those in the, yeah. like, vertical yeah, levels, right? because you need to jump on them just right, or else you'll just bounce like an idiot. They're you kind know of what in I mean? lieu of, in Mario 1, how there's the how there's the springs. Yes, it's like, very similar. Yeah. There's a lot of pipe related levels here, a lot of munchers in this in this yeah. stage. Seven, I'm gonna be completely honest with you. Seven is really challenging. Oh yes. As a, a lot of the state this is where the game like it's like, okay, this is the second to last level. We're not like screwing around anymore. Yeah. Right? It's like uh, these stages are hard. Like in, in the one where you have to keep jumping on Seven, the arrow six, blocks. Yeah, the arrow block that when you jump on it, it either goes up or to the left. Or to the, the right. I think it goes down, down. too. It goes all. So you have to like do this kind of dance on it to make it go <laughs> yeah. like essentially where you want it to go. But, but the problem is, is that there'll be like pipes with piranhas like coming through. Yeah. And, like you got to move left. You got to move right. And you're like, I can't go too far to the left because the little guys coming up and down from the pipe. But don't they also dissipate after a while and you have to get a new one? Yes, it gets I think it's it's more so I believe it's like past a certain height it like fades and yes. you got to you got to make a transfer. <gasps> Yeah, this is like it's hairy. Yeah, this level is hairy. And I don't. That almost seems like a technical limitation that that even exists. Probably, but they yeah. co- they yeah. made it a uh, uh, feature, not yeah. a bug. Yeah, I'll tell you that. I want to mention one thing about the Kooplings before we get any angry letters. We didn't get there yet in the canon, but the Kooplings are known as Bowser's kids in this game and mm-hmm. in Super Mario World. That was retconned in in recent terms, where they're just like his friends, and he only has Bowser Junior as his one son. 
That what is that? I know. Yeah. But since we're doing this in lineal order, see, I never even knew that. I thought Bowser Jr. was just his latest baby. Yeah, like, like that. He that's why he's younger or whatever. Like I was like, oh well, he must be the younger brother like, of the Kooplings. Like when Roseanne and Dan had Jerry Garcia. Yes, he's like Jerry Garcia Connor of Mario canon. <laughs> you heard it here first. But because he's younger, they want to feature him more because they right. want to make him feel special. Like or on whatever. Step by Step, where they had the fucking baby and then she yeah. was like five. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like that's next it. year, Lily. But and they've he, never done that to Bowser Jr. Good. It's, he's still in the like in Mario Kart Eight. He's still a baby. Good. He's not. He's not grown up. He should. Anyway, the boss of uh, Pipe Maze Pipeline here is Ludwig von. Koopa, and I shouldn't have to tell you who that's named after. Yeah, it's you know, silly. He is the biggest of the Koopa kids. He's supposed to be like the second in command until mm-hmm. they pretend that he's not Bowser's son anymore. So, you beat him. You're feeling good. Let's say you've made it to World 8, or maybe you warped there because you've played this a yeah. long time, right? Who hasn't warped here a hundred right. times? <laughs> so, uh, it is known as Darkland or, Quinn, you'll like this, Castle of Koopa. I just called it the lava stage when yeah. I was a kid. I was like, it's lava galore. It's fire skulls. It's horrible. So, folks, the thing about this is there are four maps. The music is scary. Why don't we just take a listen to the yeah. ominousity of this music, okay? Very scary. Not welcoming at all, I is it? I don't like it, though. <laughs> so, there's four maps here, and you got tank stages on the ground. You got like a lava tank. Mm-hmm. Then you go to another map where there's this <laughs> fucked up airship where it's just airship platforms. So, okay, wait. We didn't even talk about the worst part of this fucking bullshit area. Please go ahead. So in that, where that airship platform, before that, yes. the hand thing. Yes, that scoops you. Oh, I hate <laughs> it because it's random every single time. Like, yeah, you good could, point. There's even a way, like sometimes you don't even hit. You can like, skip you, all. You might only hit one. I think that's the minimum is yeah. one. So there's like these five tiles or whatever. Yep. And like, they you could, They're called the hand traps, by the so way. So the hand grabs you, and you have to go through this bullshit, <laughs> these, like, crappy stages that are, like, just a pain in the ass. Yeah, they're short, but yeah. they're still annoying. Right. And these... And I think you have to fight a Koopa Troopa at the end, or some enemy or some shit at the end of them, right? Like a, a Sledge Brother or, like, a Hammer it's Brother. Like or something. F this, because it, it's because of the enemy at the end that makes them even more annoying. Exactly. So you clear them, and then you deal with this alleged air ship, but it's really... All platforms, mm-hmm. the scrolling, the auto scroll, which by the way, all airships are auto scroll. Isn't it real fast in it's this one? Real fast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The best way is if you have it on your person is to get a P wing. P wing all the way. Hope for the best. I used to have like methods to like there yeah. were stages that the P wing was saved for in the Bowser area. Yes, this and is, I was like, we're not. This is where the P is used. Like this is where we use it. This is where the P is. But there's used. a there's a stage. It's in the area after this, right? So. Not the area that's where the castle part yeah, of the map. The, there's like the skulls, right? Which is all dark. Right. And one and two in here are horrible. Yeah. They're fucking <laughs> horrible. Yeah. Let us just mention, it takes until the third map yeah. to get the numbered levels. Everything is just like tank, ship, it's all just, hand trap. It's all like defense for Bowser, right? Yeah. Like, then you get the actual numbered levels. 8-1. Eight, 8-this eight, piece of shit level, 8-1. I hate it. It's all dark. There's no color. It's horrible. And there's like, it's a lot of piranha shit. Yes. In like, in, but in like the worst areas possible. Bullet bills are there. A lot of just traps. It's Fire. fucking horrible. Yeah. And 8-2 is even more annoying. This one to me was never as hard as 8-1. 8-1 is like the one for me in this this in the whole game. This is the one though where you have to make some weird ass jump in order to like win. That's the only thing I remember about 8-2. Yeah. And the sun returns for no reason. So I think you're right because I don't see no sun shining. Yeah. It's not the real he, sun. He's a doppelganger sun. It's a fake sun. Yeah. It's like Bowser Jr. He works for Bowser. There you go. So anyway, uh, of course, there's a, a mini fortress within this bullshit third map. why the map. fuck not, right? Yeah, and this one's not easy. In fact, this is the one where you have <laughs> to, like... <laughs> rotator discs oh everywhere. My God. Yeah, roto disc is everywhere. Dry bones <laughs> is everywhere. <laughs> Podobu. Hey, we heard you like roto disc. Like, oh he's my just, God. We just put a hundred of them in the stage. That's when you realize the nightmare that is roto disc. Yes. Like, you, like, at first, he just seems, like, harmless. Right. Now he's everywhere, yeah. and it's like, oh, this is a nightmare. Look at, like, just, just everywhere. Where yeah. <laughs> this is the one where there's like you have to hit the right door or at the right block or else you <laughs> trap yourself yeah. in things. This fortress, if you don't know what you're doing, you'll just throw your controller out the window yeah. and hit somebody with buy it. Buy NES controller. I swear, man. 
But there's light at the end of the tunnel because if you get past that, you get to the final map, which of course is but there's a tank World guarding it. Tank, yeah, super tank, which is just a cannonball <sighs> run basically. It's cannonballs God. everywhere. This is from insane. at the ceiling and on the floor. <laughs> yeah, auto scroll, tons of tank shit, bob bombs, rocky wrenches. Mm-hmm. Cannons, yeah, you name fuck it. Rocky, right? Of course, he's in the like last level part. Like. One last one, and then to the ultimate castle, the biggest castle that there is, Bowser's castle, which can I just say is a pain in the ass? Yes, because there are so there is so much <laughs> long bullshit here. It starts with like three Bowser statues that all the shoot laser lasers at you, right? Mm-hmm. Then you have to hop under them. Take a donut lift up. Right. Then there's like a, one of those blocks that drops that drops you down a thing. But if donut you, lift, yep. if you go, if you let it go, take you to the bottom, yeah. you're in like some other area. Yes. And it, you have to like restart. Yeah. You have to basically restart. Yes. It's really weird. So then you have to run. You have to avoid hot foot. Yeah. For <laughs> some reason, hot foot. Like he's the only hot foot in the whole thing. Like yes. why is he here? He's like, just to annoy you. Then you have to avoid three roto discs strategically. In like in like a like a very narrow corridor. Yes. There's like, hey, let's put roto disc here. Then once you reach that, you have to get your way all the way back down. You have to go over and to roto disc is going on both sides. Both by sides. The way. Yeah. You have to run up donut lifts. Make the puzzle. Make the puzzle. You have to go all the way up. There's four different levels that you can hop down to. <laughs> They're all bullshit except for the very top one. Yeah. Which you won't which know is, after trial and error. No, to be quite honest, as a kid, it felt like it's got to be the top one. Yeah. It felt I know. like an easy one, actually, an easy puzzle. But you never know, right? Right. There's a lot of bullshit paths you could take here. Right. Though. There's a bunch of different ways to get to Bowser, so we can't right. recap all of it. But eventually, one way or another, whether you have to deal with more fire statues or just more platforming, right, or whether you get a shortcut, you get to Bowser. And he's easy. He's, yeah. uh, he, he's not. He falls from the sky. He's, he's definitely easier than A1 <laughs> in and he, general. Yes. And you realize at this point... That Bowser is breaking the brick floor. Right. And all you need to do, and you can still get killed by him, don't get mm-hmm. me wrong, is just avoid him jumping on you, he's avoid trying his to, like, fire. He's butt stomp you, yeah. basically, and yes. and shoot you in the air. But, like, the shooting isn't the threat as much as the... Because you're trying to aim his butt stomp into, like... There's, like, a gap that, like... You can tell, butt right? Stomp. Because there's, there's parts of the map... That like the corners of it, if he butt stomped through those, <laughs> you just like saying that. But he would, he wouldn't go through. Do, by, by doing what? If he butt stomped <laughs> through the corner parts, he yes. wouldn't go through to the bottom. Like you can see it. Yes, yeah, so you can see the bricks. Yeah, and, and the non bricks, right? The, like stones. That yeah, he would the just, stones. Yeah, yeah. So if you just get him to break through the bricks, and by the way, you can get to him two different ways. One of them has like a, a narrow passage for him to fall, mm-hmm. and one of them has a wider one. But it's the same overall mechanics, right? Right. You avoid him. He falls. <laughs> You walk through a door. The door opens once he dies. Yep. And you go in there, you find Princess crying. Very, very intense here. Yeah. And that's how you beat the game. And you get some awesome ending credits mm-hmm. where they show a little cut se- like a little still of each world, but like custom drawn. It's right. really cool. It's very cool. It is unbelievable, this game. Uh, it is rewarding. I have to say it's a technical marvel, too, for, it is. for NES. I first played this game when I was five years old. It came out in 1990. My brother had Nintendo in 1990. My brother had Super Mario Brothers 1 and 2, and he had told me about this new Super Mario 3 game. It's and, coming. It's coming, Joe. So his... 11th birthday, I go to his house. I didn't live with my brother, which is why I say I go to his house. Mm-hmm. And we're playing Super Mario 2 in anticipation of opening presents. He really... <laughs> I like that you guys like with like pre-gamed it yeah. with Super Mario 2. It was like me and his cousins yeah. and stuff. It's like, we just got to get ready. Yep. Right? <laughs> and I'm brand new to Mario in 1990, right? right. I'm five. Yeah. But I'm playing, watching them play, and he keeps talking about how he really wants Super Mario 3. He hopes he gets it. So he opens his presents. He opens his presents... He gets Dino Wars for Nintendo. Game's good. It is good. <laughs> it's, it's like a hidden gem. But that was just a decoy. <gasps> I mean, he got it, but... But he also got Dino Wars. He it's did. really not a bad get. <laughs> then he opened and freaked out. It was Super Mario Brothers 3 in the big yellow packaging. Ah, beautiful. He has, and maybe my mom does still, a picture of him opening it. 
was it as as like he wanted it like did he freak and then immediately like just rip the box open and just like plopped it in and I think pretty soon there yeah, yeah. it's yeah. like we cannot wait so I guess I do have a bit of an emotional attachment to yeah. this game I've been playing it since pretty much it came out I can play real good now Whether I was age five or I'm 38 now, this is still one of the most satisfying games to play, to beat. Mm -hmm. It is one of the all-time greatest platformers ever. Mm -hmm. Even, like I said, folks, even if it's not your number one favorite game, I don't see how you can't respect what went into this and what came out of it. Yeah, so my experience with it from my end was really, I didn't have an NES uh, because I was a little young. I was only like a couple months younger than you, but too young to have an NES. Like I said, Game Boy was the first one. Yep. But... Before I even got my Game Boy, I had played Super Mario Brothers 3 over at somebody's house. I don't know who, but I remember always thinking it was like, wow, this is amazing. Like, it was like the game that made me want a video game system. Yeah. Like, I was like, this is incredible. Yeah. They would always show me Mario 1 in comparison, and I, like, even when I was little, I was like, wow, it's so different. Like, it's, it's such a, like, it, the, the third one's so much better, right? <laughs> it's like, it's incredible. But... I think the thing that stands out when I look back at Mario Brothers 3, I really think the controls of that one, they like change it for the better in such a good way. He, it's so precise. Like you can like turn around in air and shit, right? Yeah. It's not as committal as Mario 1 with, with the jumping and good stuff. Point. Good point. And I really think that that's what gives it the edge is you really feel in control of the character and you, when you add on top of that all these mechanics and the stage design and stuff, that's where it shines. Is they, Because they got the control down so precise, it just makes it fit like a hand in a glove with all the other parts of it. Really well said, Quinn. Right? Yeah, yeah. I, I totally agree. Because I mean, that's the thing that I think is lost on people. People are like, why is this so good? Like, what is it about it? I think it's the control as like a core. Right, the contr- how good it controls is this core, and all the other stuff is working with that basic control. the level design, right? Yeah, the power ups. Uh, not to mention, just the the graphics are really good for NES. They're very good, colorful. Even though sometimes you have the flashing crap yeah. that you you know is used to on NES, but all these sprites on screen, all these colors on screen, mm-hmm. they did a really good job. It was the MM. C three chipper. Yeah, I, I can't know. remember. Which. I think it was the, it, it was a mapper just designed. It's for one this. of the mappers for this. Yeah. yeah, the level design is always challenging, but never not fun. You yeah. know what I mean? Like it could be frustrating, but always fun, and you always know what you need to do. Yeah, it's you're just, never like. I mean, there is puzzle stages. You get but, it eventually. Yeah. yeah, and not to mention we barely mentioned it, but the mini games. Like, yeah. we didn't talk about them too much. But there's like the card one. There's the yeah, the memory game. There's right? the there's the one where the the faces are flying by and you got to hit the button at the right time, like the roulette, the roulette wheel, like kind, a yeah, slot combo. Yeah, and it, like all all these little those kind of things. They I think they make they add to the experience. Even the Hammer Brothers little mini challenges do too. I mean, mm-hmm. they break it up. They break they up the do. monotony. They really do. And there's a little bit of choose your own adventure for the first time here because whereas one and two, I'm talking about the US two, were lineal and you had to play every level, here you have some, for the first time, some choices. Yeah. Right? You can get around certain levels. You can strategically. It's like the first one. But other yes. than that, that's the, the before warps was your only way to go Correct. around, right? And now you the map actually allows you to yeah. like go around stages. And we mentioned the maps being the first visual aspect of where you are, and I really think that's an underrated component of adding. At the time, because I've seen things about this, the, the maps blew a lot of people away. People yeah. didn't, that was a part of it that I think people didn't expect because they maybe have saw stuff on the wizard like or something. Yeah, I don't know, or maybe the map was on the wizard, but people didn't really understand what it was. Yeah. Either way, like a lot of people I've heard have said when they first played it, and me too, even as a kid, the map was like very like not a lot of games had that in general. No. Like it would the that was influential that the map was in there. Like oh, yeah. other games would adopt the idea of a platformer. Okay, you have a map. A like, platformer it, having a map, yeah. Right. It's like you're supposed to have a map. Yeah, not right? just an adventure game, you're an RPG or something, but a platformer having a map. Right. Like almost like all there was all these like games that did that after this. Oh, hell right? yeah. It was like, oh, well, you gotta have a map. Mario did it, so that's kind of like the model, right? Absolutely, and having all these different worlds with their own unique character, uh, having Mario be able to fly, there's a lot of influence in this game, which we'll cover as we go on in this Mario series, but as far as its, uh, its reception here in the United States and Japan, it received and still receives near universal acclaim. 
I, I don't know a person that talks crap like, about this game a lot. And games can a lot of games are controversial. Yeah, like by nature. But, but I, like this is like one of those games. It's just like I think it hit at the right time, and yeah. and then all the innovations were they were needed to me. This kind of set the stage for the 16-bit era, right? Like I this agree. game, like it's like. We have all the pieces. We're still limited a little bit by the NES hardware, but this is how a complex game wants everyone's going to have 16 bits and more like room on the cartridge and yeah. all this shit. Like, this is how we should make it. It's an appetizer for right. that. Right. Yeah. I, I agree with you. Uh, it was a top selling game in Japan in 1989. 18 million copies sold lifetime. It's a big one, man. Uh, and it is regarded, like I said at the top of the show, as one of the greatest video games of all time. It really helped to launch or continue the launch of Mario Mania here in the United States into the 90s. Yeah, I think this is... It's funny because I think this is the game that people, when they think of early Mario, they think of this more than probably Mario 1, if you ask me. I think I do. Yeah. You know the biggest thing about this that was a long-standing rumor that Miyamoto himself finally confirmed is that Mario 3 is, in fact, a stage play. Yeah, so that's concluding at the beginning... There's like a, a curtain raises curtain. and all it, the it, set pieces are like bolted onto the wall, right? But this would be something like a a kind of theme they would go with for years to come. Yeah, they were already kind of suggesting it in two, a little right? bit, only a tiny. That was a dream, though. Yeah, explicitly. But here it's like no, no, no. Like it's a stage play. Yeah, he walks off the actual literal stage yeah. at the end. Kind of makes the costumes make more sense too, if you think about it. Yeah, that's yeah. a good point. Right, all the yeah. costumes. I didn't mm-hmm. even think of that. So listen, folks, we've said a lot of words on Mario 3 here. We've given you every enemy. We've talked about a lot of uh, the worlds. And because this game is so vast and so expansive, I'm sure there are things that we didn't cover that we didn't talk about. And for that, we sincerely apologize. But we invite you to please let us know what you think of Super Mario Brothers 3. You can do that on Twitter at AWM Podcast and join our group. Acid Wash Memories on Facebook. But my final thought on this, Quinn, is it still holds up to this day. Absolutely. I love this game, and it will be a lot of fun to see where the Mario series went from here. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, to me, this this is this is now the entry point to like modern, more modern More Mario. modern Mario. We'll be getting into the 90s of Mario, but next week, of course, will be something completely different, so do not you worry. Until that time, thank you guys so much for being with us here on Acid Wash Memories. We really hope you liked it. We sure had fun doing this, yes. Quinn. Uh, we will be back next week. It'll be something else. Until that time, follow us where we said. Leave us a review. Other than that, we'll see you next week for more Acid Washed Memories. See ya. Like what you heard? Be sure to leave a review and subscribe on your favorite podcast app. We will see you next week. We'll see you next week.